All right, shalom, shalom. All oh, praise the most high. Right. We live back here on YouTube. Everywhere, dear. Oh. Everywhere. It's not, it's not everywhere, dear. Hello, 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 hello. Shalom, oh, I shalom. forgot. YouTube mm -hmm. has uh, a delay. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Shalom, family. Shalom, family. How we doing this? How we doing this evening? Shalom, shalom. How's everybody doing? Few topics today. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. I'm just happy to see uh, everyone waking up, man. I've been, you know, really, really filtering a lot of calls and a, a lot of videos and uh, a lot of people are really awake right now to what's going on in the world and who the Lord's children are and how we're supposed to walk. And I just want to say, uh, Kathleen Reed, how you doing, man? Carol Kathleen Cameron, Reed. how you doing? Peace and blessings, sis. Rochelle Danielle, Yisrael, blessings, blessings, blessings. Deborah White, peace and blessings, Deborah. How Deborah you doing, Mrs. White. White? Mrs. White, how you doing? All praises. Who we got over here? All right, Shalom family. Shalom Neff. Shalom Neff. He's always there. Shalom Neff. He sure is. He's always there. Um, Serenity. Shalom. Serenity. Shalom. Faithful blessings. Shalom. Shalom. Pentel 63. Shalom. Miss Dana. How you doing, Miss Dana? Shalom. Miss Dana. Hey, Dana. All right. Who is this? Shawana. If I say it wrong, Jeffra Mazalil, I don't know. How you doing? Shalom. All right. All right, Shalom. Wailing woman. Hey. Salute Wailing you, my woman. sister. Lord. How you doing, sister? How you doing? All righty. Luke Shrimp. Hello. How you doing? Kyla, how you doing? Patricia. Thank you, Patricia. Shalom to you too as well. All praises. We got a lot of people coming in here. You know, it's amazing because. You know, I'm seeing right now that the ministry has grown a lot and with people coming in and learning um, and people, so many people say they pray first and when they pray, the Lord leads them our way. And, and, and what that means is he's leading them to the family and we're all a family now. And this is why a lot of people right now are getting a lot of conviction going on in their souls and their bodies, um, because the Lord is working through all of us as a family. Um, once we all link up, it's a spiritual thing. It's not something I can explain to you. You know, you know, it's amazing. I was in the barbershop today and uh, I'm just sitting there getting a haircut. And uh, one of the brothers just came up. He said, Elk, I can't believe it's you. I was like, like, you know, like I said, brother, how you doing? He said, man, I see you and your wife and I've been watching all. He said, I went to a channel and I was looking at, you know, uh, religious channels or channels to learn the word. And he said, you guys channel came up as one of the top channels. He said, I couldn't believe it. And when I met you and I said, well, man, thank you. I said, brother, I really appreciate it. You know, and he was like, you know, I just got a question, you know, and I was like, what's going on? You know, he was sitting down, you know, I think he came from the Muslim background. And so he had the question. His question was, you know, elder, if we got these young men out here and these young men, you know, need to know the word and this and in the world. And, you know, you know, how do you reach them? How do you get them the word? How do you get this? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I had to explain to him something. I said, well, first of all, brother, we got to remember this is a call out assembly. First of all, the Lord's got to be calling them. If he didn't utter their name, how can they ever hear his voice? First of all. That's real. Secondly, I said, it's not your job, as Hebrews 10, 26 says, to teach every man. He says, I'm going to put it on what? All four corners of the earth. Why? Because Holy Spirit is what calls people. The Holy Spirit of the anointing is what draws people in. Your job is to set a seed. You set a seed, but they got to till the ground. The Lord is the only one who can give the increase. So I say, so your concern is above your pay grade. He said, well, what, do you, what do you mean about that? I said, let me give it simple. When Ezra asked the question, uh, mm -hmm. how many times, uh, how, why we all were not made perfect? Why didn't you just make Adam perfect? He said, Ezra, I gave my children my laws to see the fruit that comes from them. And like I always say before, he, Ezra asked another question. Why are we all born at one time? The Lord said to him, Ezra, can a woman's womb hold 10 babies at one time? Well, no. He said, Ezra, let me ask you a question since you asked me questions. What is the weight of fire? I don't know the weight of fire. Let me ask you another question then, Ezra. Can you tell me the four gates that the winds come from? Can you tell me the chambers where the ox is muzzled? Can you tell me where Leviathan stays in his chambers? He says, and he said, no, no. He said, if you can't tell me things you came up with, then how can you ever understand heavenly things? I say, son, that is spiritual. That's above our pay grade. Why? The Lord says that the anointing teaches you all things. And that, that anointing comes to the righteous. So 
you can go ahead and you can mm -hmm. try to change a person and you can give them the word, but you can't get them to, 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 to do right. The Holy Spirit does. I said, if you're a liar, you get dipped in water, you're just a wet liar. Huh? If you're a thief and you get dipped in water, you just come up a wet thief. It's not about the outside of the cup. It's about the inside. Mm -hmm. So let's think about this for a moment. And I said this before. One thing about Elijah, he asked his servant, he told his servant, I need you to go and heal that young, that young boy who died. This is the same young boy who he made his mother have more oil and also more flour in her vessels because she cooked some bread for him and gave him some wine. And so he made, he, he made sure she had more for provisions. But later her son ended up um, passing away. And so as a servant went, he went to lay hands on him, but he couldn't move. The boy didn't move. Why did he move? It was for a reason. You see, the Lord searches out a person's inside. You see, we can't do anything on our own will. The Lord has to give us strength and power yes. to do it. It has to come from him. The Lord knew that Elijah's servant had inside. He was jealous of him. Not only that, the Lord is Alpha and Omega. Mm. Remember, Elijah's servant also did another thing. He went behind Elijah's back when the gentleman tried to give Elijah silver and all that. He said, I don't want your silver. But his servant went behind his back and pretended that Elijah said he wanted it. And Elijah perceived this thing. And he told him, since you did that, I'm going to make you a leper and all your family. And so saying that, we got to understand that the Lord is who gives us the power. We do not have any power of our own. That's why you don't say, well, tomorrow I'm going to do that. Tomorrow I'm going to do that. I'm going to do. No, you say, if it's the Lord's will. And so I explained to him that that power, the Holy Spirit has to be given to a person for that person to come out of sin. But the Lord searches you out. He knows who's genuine. And he knows who says one thing with their mouth, but they're doing other things in the dark. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit will not rest in those places. That person will never come to the light. That person will always tread in their own poop. They will, I always say this, you cannot make a chicken an eagle. If somebody gonna be pecking in their poop, it is what it is. You cannot give somebody wings to fly. Only the most high can do that. And he was like, wow, that sure explained a lot. And I said, yeah, you, you, you're worried about things that way beyond your pay grade. Well, the mindset is a religious one because right. religions have you recruiting. Right. What does <laughs> they have you doing? They have you recruiting right? because they have a revolving door. Right. And not only that, it's about tithing. It's about money. It's all about what kind of how they fill their coffers. Right. They're not trying to save souls. You understand? They're trying to save their homes. They're trying to save their, their cars and their, by their, jet. Yeah, by their jet planes. This is what it is. See, man has totally omitted saving souls for a, for a buck. Or a dollar, or even for pride or a position. But the Lord's true children don't care about pride, they don't care about position, they don't care about title, and they don't care about money. Why? Because rich men put all their hope in money, and money cannot save you. Mm -hmm. The Lord said that the knowledge of this world is what? Foolishness. Wisdom comes from above. Speaking of, we, we were dealing with one of a, somebody we know who's got a lot of money, um, and so they thought. So, well, anyway, that things were coming up and one thing that my wife mentioned to me is that, you know, this person is supposed to have all this knowledge in this world and all of this, but yet they have no common sense because common sense is not common. Wisdom is given from above. All these people are doctors, professors, lawyers, architects, you know, all these professional titles, and they go to college or universities, they're educated. And what they're, that's what they call it, but it's really indoctrinated. And what happens is they become puffed up, prideful. They start thinking that they know more than you when a common man on the street has 20 times more wisdom and knowledge than they do. You see, they put their money and trust, their, their, their trust in their money, and they think about their riches and how they can gain more. Not understand that life is like a puff of smoke is going to go out. Also, one thing we had to explain to this person is that you don't even know what's going on around you. It's like, I don't know why these... These buildings are not being built. I don't know why these contracts aren't going through. I don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on because you don't know what's going on around you because you stick in that world where everything's about money and money, but you're not finding out the fine things around you that are going on. May 11th, you have the China and all these other people that are not going to be back in the reserve currency anymore. March, March 11th. It's March 11th. It's March 11th. March 11th. So in March 11th, they're not going to be um, backing the bank's money anymore. So the FDIC, the 250000 that they uh, um, typically, where well, they say it will go ahead and protect you from loss, it's not going to be there anymore. So you're going to start seeing a lot of banks start closing. 
interest rates are going to be what, Sister Makai? What do you think? They're going to they're gonna skyrocket. They're going to skyrocket. So things around us is changing real fast now. And the cost mm -hmm. of everything is going to skyrocket, not just the cost of money. Right. You got, so, yes. Money's going to be thrown in the streets. That's biblical scripture. I talked to yeah. somebody else today who mm -hmm. said, oh, I don't have my money in the bank. I got it all rolled up here. I said, well, you better roll it on out and get you some gold or silver or something Yeah, else. because it's not going to do you any that's good. Be toilet paper for you. Said, <laughs> 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 Wait, what'd you tell her? Oh, goodness. It's going to be toilet paper. Yeah, She's telling the man, truth. I sent her. Um, it's the truth. Yeah. I sent her some yeah. So we got to understand what's coming on the horizon. Yeah. See, the Lord's children are spiritual. And see, this is another thing, the difference between the rich and us. We've been systematically pushed to the bottom for so long. We've been systematically not giving housing. We've been systematically not giving um, proper loans. We've been systematically um, been given the worst food. We've been systematically um, been given the worst medicines and the worst treatment of all people. And they cannot figure out why we're still here. So while they're sitting there struggling and going through all these headaches and worried about their money and worried about, you know, what was that guy? He had lost uh, 300 million. And he had about hundred some million left and he committed, he offed himself. I'm going to just put it there. He unalived himself. And so. Yeah, that was back in what? I, I'm, I have I no think. understanding of that. I'm like, dude, you were still really, really rich. But in his mind, he was poor. And so th what they put, see, the Lord says, wherever your treasure, wherever your heart is, that's what? Sister so Makai, what does he say? Wherever your heart is. That's where your treasures are. And so right now, every a lot of these people are putting their treasures, you understand, on earth. They're not putting their their, 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 their heart on earth. They're not putting their heart in heaven. Their hope on the, what is faith? Things of hope for, but yet not seen. They're not building up their faith. They're not studying to show themselves to be approved. And so therefore they're putting their treasures here. Just like James Brown said, I traded a sunrise for a sunset. We got to understand folks that money cannot save you and money will not help you with what's coming. Money's going to be thrown in the streets. If you don't have cash at, I mean, uh, what is it called? Uh, crypto, Crypto.com. And if you don't have um, Coinbase, those are two that I recommend. Crypto.com and Coinbase to start buying you some crypto because we're going to a digital system. Saying that, you need to be ahead of the curve. If your money's in the bank, if you got 401ks, Roth IRAs, and these things that are tied to the dollar, and when that dollar crashes, because one day you're going to go, everybody's going to get, you see how they're doing the outages right now? This is practice. This is why outages on all I'm different platforms, you, all, television, cable, on. all of that, because there's going to be major outages. This is why I always tell you guys that if you're going to get the CFER or other books, always get a hard copy because it's going to be a time you won't be able to do this digital thing. So saying that, you got to be prepared for the unseen. That's why the Lord said even the elect could be fooled if it was possible. But you can't fool us. We know exactly what's coming. What is coming? BRICS is rolling out is, is, is dollars. Saudi is officially said, you know what? I'm with BRICS as of last week. The only thing that is backing our dollar is the petrodollar. The petrodollar now, as we know it, is going to be completely taken away. Which was based on their oil now. Based Saudi's on oil. Saudi's oil. Our money is basically, you understand, just reserves being printed over and over again. And that money was only backed by China. It was backed by China who would buy, uh, who would um, basically back the reserves. And also they had 45% of the reserve backing, 45%. Now they're down to 14%. And as before we know it, the next month or two, it'll be gone. And so forth and so on with these other nations. Saying that if they're not going to be back in this reserve, that means and if the Saudis are gone, where's the money going to be worth? It's not backed by gold. Or third silver. world, y'all. Come on. It's going to be backed by what? Nothing. Nothing. It's paper. When Nixon did what he did, and he took the monetary banking system where our dollars was backed by gold, and then he said, you know what? We're not going to no longer back it by gold. We're going to just print paper. That's when the interest rates and so forth and so on went out of the, skyrocket out of the roof. So saying that, the housing market is going to completely change. Okay? Um, there's a lot of foreclosures going to happen. And there's a lot of things that's going to happen that are coming. And there's nothing no one can do. Why do you think these, if you guys have not all noticed all these mega buildings they're building, these big multifamily properties? That's part of the agenda. Now, believe me, a lot of what they're planning to do is not going to work. One thing they will do, they will close these banks, just like they did in 1934 
when they pulled the derivatives and what we had was a depression. Right now, we, we don't understand it, but we're going through a slight recession. Later, we will be going through a depression. So you guys got to prepare yourselves. When you go to these banks, they're going to be closed. Yeah. A lot of them are already closed. Thank you. And they're yeah, doing practices real. that they didn't used to do. I mean, my wife's talking how they went through one of our accounts and wiped it out just over a simple card or something. Nothing. So what I'm saying is they're not even, they're not playing business as usual. And they put restrictions on how much money you can move. I see. It's getting deep, folks. So I'm going to say this again, crypto.com. I'm also say um, you want Coinbase. Coinbase has been glitching a little bit. Well, they glitched once, but yeah. they got it back up the okay. same day. Okay, so Coinbase is the other. You download those. You say, okay, how do we use them? What do we do? I want you to go to YouTube. I want you to do a, a crypto.com tutorial, and I want you to do a Coinbase tutorial. I want you to take your time. Now, you're going to say, okay, how do we know what to buy? The only one that I will say is XRP. I'm not going to recommend a lot of others. We already know Bitcoin is at 68. They say Bitcoin is supposed drop. to get to 100,000. 100, so, so Bitcoin is definitely one where you can't go wrong. Um, Ethereum. Ethereum is another one. So Ethereum is another one. Those are sure ones for the most part. Now, I don't want to tell you guys too much because I want you coming back to me if yourself drop. <laughs> To my brother, Listen, I you the do profit, your own bro. research you on the profit. everything. Do, you, your, yeah. do your research on everything. Yeah. I don't want you to come you back know? and say, if you're supposed to be a profit, you should have known it was going to drop. <laughs> you should have known. You don't recommend it, all this stuff. And now all of a sudden, we, my, my, my coin base don't drop down to $15. Well, I didn't tell you to buy that pocketbook stock or pocketbook uh, cryptocurrency. I'm, the ones I'm telling you about. Well, no, a lot of government and um, a lot of governments and wealthy people are buying Ethereum, a lot of Ethereum and, Bitcoin. and Bitcoin. Those are the two main so, ones. Yeah, Ethereum and Rothschild Bitcoin. Rothschild bought like 45 million of them a couple years back. Right. He was buying it. Yep. So they were ahead of so, the game. Yeah. So these think tanks that they have are way ahead, folks. So being Israel, the 12 tribes, we have to come together. Anything we know about what's going on in the industry, what's going on around us, we have to, dis we have to disclose it with each other. Not only that, there's a time when we're going to have to all help each other out. And this is why the Lord is we, not the rebels amongst us. If you got people whose spirit are not right, people who are on here with the petty things, oh, your beard ain't right. Oh, your hair ain't covered. Oh, wait a minute. I seen you wear this uh, ring or this watch. Are you getting the message on this thing? Are you getting the message? Or, or is that anything to do with salvation? We need to stop worrying about petty things and start worrying about the message that Yeshua left, that the prophets left. So that we are sure that we have oil in our lamp when he comes back. Because if that, if that lamp is dark, the bridegroom is going to leave you alone. He's not coming. Because if he can't see you, how can he ever grab you? Mm -hmm. He's not coming back for anything that's got darkness. He's only coming back for his children of the light. And so saying that, we got to wake up to what's going on around us. So I wanted to really make that point that our people have to wake up, know what's going on around them, and be prepared. Saying that, what do we do? You, you need to get food. Um, there is a store here I went to as an um, Amish store. I believe it's an Amish store in, in Tucker, Georgia. And they have a whole bunch of cases of dry goods, flour, all this stuff that lasts up to 10 years. Oh, yeah. you know, speaking mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. uh, this sister told me, now, I've never been there. Okay. But it's a place also on the West End in Atlanta. Okay. Um, they giving away free groceries. Really? Called a uh, I think it's called a grocery spot. Yeah, but that's for the poor. People really need it. I wouldn't. Most people here, okay. I, I don't know. That. I ain't gonna say that. A lot of these people that hit me up, they going through some stuff. Well, we all Israel. So Israel, I want y'all to know this. I want y'all to hear me. Don't take it personal. All of Israel is going through it. All of our people are. You know why? Because he's coming back soon. You're being tested. Did not the Most High say I'm going to put temptation in the last days? On the whole earth. He said he's doing the Lord said he himself is doing it. Why? Because he wants to. What did he tell Ezra? He gave his children the laws for what reason? To it's, see the fruit that comes from them. He wants to see the fruit that comes from us. So now that he put the temptation on the whole world, but what did he say he's gonna do with those who have his elect, his chosen? He'll keep them from the hour of what? Temptation. He'll keep you he from gonna, the hour of temptation. You gotta have faith. He's gonna let He'll that keep faith you from be it. Tested. You're being tested. You're going through the fire. And it gets hot. It gets hot, but you will not get burned. You it gets hot, 
but you will not get burned. Mm. Because as soon as you go through this fire, what do we do to Lord's children? We get on our knees, as Moses did when he had his knees nailed to the ground, as Joshua said. We get on our knees, we put our hands up, and we pray to the Most High to relieve us of whatever affliction we're going through. And then all of a sudden, that water comes. Yes. That's that word. That's that Holy Spirit. All of yes. a sudden, that Holy Spirit, that Ruach Kodesh, washes all that away. Bring it out. This is how you get rid of impurities. This is how you get a fine piece of gold. As the Lord said, I'm going to make a man like an oaf for a fine piece of gold. Yes. This is what he's doing to us. He's bringing out the impurities. All those things or bad habits we had, he's taking away little by little. You ain't going to get this overnight. Did they come overnight? No. So therefore, they cannot leave overnight. This is why you got to go through the fire. But then you got to go back to that word, which is the water. Did he not say that that word is deep fountains, living water? That's right. Huh? If you want to live, you got to get in that water. Now, when you go back to that water, what happens again? You go through problems with your children. You go through banking for the housing problems. You go through all these things in this world, sickness. That's that fire again. The Lord said, if you don't go through the fire, you're a bastard. He don't even know you. All prophets, all people of the Most High have always gone through a perpetual hell one way or another. It's a refining this is, process. Say it again, Sister Micaiah. It's a refining process. And we know that refining process. The brother asked me in the barbershop today. He said, brother, I was watching y'all on TV. He said, man, I'm so glad I met you fine. He says, but what happened? How did you know? What? I said, son, when the Lord came to our house, we knew. The Lord told me to bring me my wife. Bring me your wife. I'm going to take that veil from her face and six layers of skin. We had an intercession. This is what we had, and this is what you guys are getting. Maybe not as potent as us because the Lord had to do a certain thing with us so we could be here with you today. That's why we had a deeper one where I talked in parables for nine days. I lost 15 pounds that week. And everything that we ever done, we had to bring it out right or wrong, Sister Micaiah. Mm -hmm. And by midnight, if it wasn't out, what would happen, Sister Micaiah? He would reveal it. He would reveal it. So everything was a refining process so that he could use us as a vessel to wake his children up. You know, and he started off letting me know. By giving my husband uh, two prayers, I said word for word in the spirit. I was praying in the spirit. I was not even speaking. How old were you? <laughs> the first one I was nineteen before we even met. I no, was praying remember, for a husband. Remember, you gave me one of your three years old praying for the doll. Yeah. Uh, no, I was like six. Six. Okay, mm -hmm. I remember that. That was amazing. Yeah. He said, "I tell your wife, I remember when she came to me because every time she comes to me, son." I hear the same voice as she was a little girl. And I used to pray to him all the time. I remember time. when she was little, she kept always begging me and asking me about her husband. As a little <laughs> girl, she always prayed for you. So I've always heard her voice. This is why I had a special man stored up for her when she became an adult. I didn't say that to you. I didn't tell you all of that. He told me more, but I didn't tell you. And he said, if she is special to me, you are special to me. And as I gave her to you, she's given to you. And the Lord Don't said, get me all emotional on here. I'm not, but that's what he said. And he said to me, he said, from this moment on, I want you to give my daughter these prayers that she gave to me. I remember she asked for a doll and she begged me for that doll. And I told her father in the spirit, what happened with that doll? Did you ever get it? Yeah. All right. So, and then he told me when she was in the kingdom hall, and he said, tell your wife. I remember when she used to sit in the kingdom hall and I knew that she was my daughter, even though it wasn't my house. Her mother would sit here. Missy would sit next to her and Michelle in the middle and Wesley would be at the end, her brother. And he would always be falling asleep. <laughs> and she said to me, she said, wait a minute. That's exactly what used to happen. Then he said, tell your wife. And he gave me another one. You remember the other dream? Well, we the other, got other to, prayer. to the argument, remember? We was in Myrtle Beach. Yeah. Yeah, and that was something I didn't even, I didn't even, what, what had happened with that prayer? He gave you that prayer word for word. Yeah, he told me, your wife came to me. And I mm. remember, I don't remember what I said because he, you know, he took it away, he gave it to me then. I don't remember that one word for word, right. man. It's yeah. amazing. It was amazing. So he wanted her amazing to know experience. that he was speaking through me. And that it wasn't a, a fad, it wasn't fictitious, because she was raised by the Jehovah Witnesses, and they teach you that in order that you have to go through them to get to the Most High, and that he doesn't talk to you directly. Right. And so, therefore, she couldn't believe it, what I was saying to her. Her eyes were like, Woodsy Owl, 
I'm kidding you not. They for was like two weeks. They, they were like, like she was looking, walking around like this. Wendy Williams. God damn, that's boy. how I was looking. Jeez, for Louise, two weeks. not permanent spirit, boy. Man, like I was like, man. Shocked. I remember we went to I Walmart. Wasn't scared, I was shocked. We went to sign something for my mom, and I asked her a question. She looked up at me like. <laughs> I'm like, man, close your eyes, some sister. She's like, I just can't believe all of this. Right. But the Lord is showing me through you. Amazing. She's like, I can't believe. It. She said, you knew my prayers word for word. You weren't even around when I said these prayers. You know, and then the Lord, what he started doing was another thing was he started having us fast. I didn't realize I was fasting to the fifth day. I didn't know. I didn't even know. I knew. You know, and I went to go eat. He totally took our appetite. And he made me throw it up. Yeah. That's something else y'all yeah. need to understand. Too. Right. Like, yeah. The most high will provide everything we yeah. need. We can only physically prepare for this so, so much. much. Don't worry. The Lord, yeah. that's beautiful, my wife said. The Lord says earthquakes, famine, pestilence, all these things will come to pass. He said, but do what? Don't worry. These things must what? Come to pass. Look up, look up, and know what? Your deliverance is near. See, yeah. we need to be glorifying the most high right now. You see how we are right here right now at this moment? And all of us right here at this moment are learning and we're in the spirit. You can feel the Holy Spirit here. You can feel it. So we're in the Lord's house. Acts 17, 24, he tells you straightway, I do not dwell in the man's house. He dwells with us. So we're his children. We're the ones who was given to Yeshua. Yeshua brought us here and then he came to be with us. But we got to go back to that state. In order to get back to that state, we got to clean this vessel out. So when the Lord came into our home and he did what he did, he was preparing us for this moment. That was 11 years ago. We've read a many books. We've done a many lessons. We've been involved in a many spiritual things to the point where the Lord has refined us here. And every day we learn something new. Every, every day. day we realize what we don't know, how much we don't know. That's called being humble, being meek. Pride comes before what? Great fall. A great fall. Too many people become prideful. Because they have a following of people listen to them. And so they'll take that and think that they got the all, they're all doing all might, and then they become corrupt because leaven has entered them. Once leaven enters you, what does it do with dough or bread? It rises. It gets puffed up. It gets puffed up. And once you become puffed up, you're going to be exposed. Look at your so-called pastors right now as we speak. Look at these churches right now as we speak, how they've been all been exposed. Now you guys have learned that you should never, ever been tied into anyone. If you want to give alms from your heart, that is what Yeshua came back and told you you do. He said, you don't have to go through that tithing with these men and a bird, a dove, a boy, they tone for your sin. He says, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get on. They're going to put me on a tree. And they're going to take, they're going to, they're going to unalive me. And when they do this, guess what? Guess what? My blood is going to cover you now. Because I know, why do you think the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Sadducees, the Pharisees, wanted to, wanted to take him to Pontius Pilate? They took him to Herod. Herod said, I ain't got nothing to do with it. They took him back to Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate said, hey, you want Barabbas or you want him? They said, we want him. Let the murderer go. So they let him go. And when they let him go, they delivered up the Messiah. That's why at Passover, all of us, and we already have our Passover. This is why all of us had to slaughter a lamb. And put that, that blood on our doorpost. It was symbolic of us, every tribe who delivered him up. So now, what do we do? Hmm? Hebrews 13, 11 says, go in without the camp. We talk about this. We need to get his blood to cover us now. And this is why it's imperative you guys got to read. Now, we can read with you guys. But the Lord said, I want you to study to show yourself to be what, Sister Mekhi? Approved. You got to study to show yourself to be approved. He don't want hearers of the word. This is another thing. You got to be what? Doer. You got to be a doer. This is that separation. That's that set apart. That what makes you a saint. Well, you don't know a walker. You're not a talker, but you are a doer. You hear me? You got action. You see, when the Lord sees you taking two steps, he'll take 10 towards you. If he sees you picking up this book, remember the scriptures say when you read that that's your breastplate, your helmet, and your belt. It's a covering. It's a shield. This is how the angels come. This is why they take notes. I'm trying to give you guys some wisdom right now. Too many people are um, have their doctorate degrees. They have their master's degrees, sociology degrees, psychiatry degrees, all these different degrees. And on yeah, sandy ground. They don't send. Well, boy, 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 boy. Praise it, my wife. They don't. What's so what kind of? They 
Sandy ground. Bro. Sandy ground. All it takes is a small wind to blow. And I'm telling you, the Most High is blowing right now. Isn't his name Yahuwah? He Come who on. breathes life. Nailing him. He's blowing a lot of people on Sandy ground. Over. And he's blowing them over as we speak. But the Lord's children are on what? A solid ground. They have a foundation. They found that rock, which is the Most High. And we know that Yeshua is what? The cornerstone. You have to build your house on a stone, a solid foundation. You got to follow Yeshua. He's the cornerstone mm -hmm. to get us to the kingdom. Yes. Without him, we cannot get to the kingdom. I had a young man just ask me today. He says, Elder, when I pray, he says, I'm reading. When they got baptized, they did the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all he goes, when we pray, do we do? We pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I say, son, let me ask you. I say, remember the scriptures tell you straightway. The most I say he's not going to judge what, Sister Micaiah? He said he's not going to judge by what he sees or hears. But no, no, not, no, 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 no. The most I says he's judging no man. Oh, Yahushua's judging. Who's judging us? Yahushua. Who came here with us? Yahushua. Who died for our sins? Yahushua. Yeah. He's Who's the judging. mediator? Who's the intercessor? Yahushua. So in order when you pray, you got to go through him in order to get to our father. Remember the prophets saw Elijah coming down and Moses coming down? Hmm? Y'all remember that? And when he saw him coming down, the prophets were, can we make three tabernacles? The Lord said, wait, this is my son. You only worship him. That's who you go through to get to the father. The mediator, the intercessor. You pray, and when you finish, you say, in the name of Yeshua, I pray, amen. Now that prayer is going through him to get to his father. Remember, he's going to sit on his right-hand side. This is how you pray. But if you don't have an earnest heart, if you got a devil tongue, what do you think is going to happen? He's not going to hear your prayers. Hmm. So I wanted to go over that. That reminds me of, um, mm -hmm. I had posted a video uh -huh. um, where this woman is trying to defend pedophilia. That's something that's happening now. Oh, man, come on now. They have groups and organizations with these sick people yeah and so this woman asked could she pray for them you know i want y'all to understand we don't read some scriptures certain on folks have already yeah. been judged yeah the most high is not going to hear <laughs> no prayers of a pedophile. concerning them none zero none they're the walking dead that ash they're already burnt up as a matter <laughs> of fact we curse them with multiple curses yes i'm one of the lord's they sons i curse all pedophiles Everyone, I'm a father. I'm a grandfather of 32 children. How in the mighty, most highest name can they even put their hearts to do little things to these babies? Do not the Lord say, if you touch one of my little ones, it's like putting a millstone around your neck? They now know not what they do. Why did he say a millstone? A millstone is a graveyard marker. Mm hmm they already put the marker around their neck. They already carried it to their grave. They're the walking dead. We don't pray for the wicked. The wicked is already cursed. Anybody taking innocence from a baby, I don't bless them. I don't pray for them. I curse them. So as my father's cursed them. Can you read for me Jeremiah 7, 16? Let's say a prayer first, okay. real quick. Let's yes. say a prayer. Let's make sure so. Heavenly Father, heaven, blessed be you, Adonai Yahuwah. Heavenly Father, El Shaddai, God of God and King of Kings. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing your spirit here, the Ruach Kodesh, and giving us Yeshua. Thanking you for leaving it enough for us in these last days, Father. Father, we cannot follow the letter of the law, but that Holy Spirit, that force that you put on us when we're doing wrong, now that you're waking us up to who we are, where we came from, and then you're telling us and showing us where we're going. Bless you, Abba. Blessed be the Rowak Kodesh, and blessed be Yeshua. Thank you for waking us, Father. Thank you. Thank you for the anointing, Abba. Thank you for the light, Father, in this Thank dark Abba. place. Ooh. Father, this place is so dark. There's so much sin here, Heavenly Father. I pray that you protect your children and their children, Father, those who seek you with an open heart. I pray that you put the angels, cherubims, seraphims, and the archangels around them, Abba, for you are the holies of holies. Your spirit, Heavenly Father, rests on those who serve you with one body, one mind, and one spirit. I pray, Father, today that you give everyone here, your children, right now, your spirit. 
so that we can serve you, Father, unceasingly, so that, Father, we can be found worthy when Yeshua comes back. Yeah. And he's looking for oil in our lamp, Father. I pray, Father, that you light the wicks right now. I pray, Heavenly Father, every day as we study, you fill these lamps with oil, Abba, so we're not found wanting on the day of his return. Father, there's a wedding. I pray right now, Heavenly Father, everyone here can be in that wedding party, rejoicing in your name with palms in our hands, outstretched arms, praising you unceasingly, Heavenly Father, and looking at Yeshua, who will be standing taller than all of our people, with a crown on his head, and knowing that he gave his life for us as a ransom so that we could see the new kingdom. Bless you, Father. Bless you, Yeshua. And bless the Rowak Okadesh. I pray that you bless this lesson and bless all that we give today, Father, through the Rowak Okadesh. Because without you, none of this will be possible. Without your spirit. Bless you, Father. Blessed be New Zion and bless the kingdom to come. And we pray all this in the name of your son, Yeshua, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Saying that, too many people who are unlearned, um, they'll ask to pray for the wicked, not understanding scripture. Don't forget to turn over. I will. I will. When the spirit tells me, I will, mama. Thank you. I just want some people to get in here too. All praises. So we got to understand that the wicked is judged and there, there's judgment coming. Let's go to Jeremiah. Um, seven sixteen, please. So, some if you don't mind. Jeremiah seven. Yeah, go to seven, and then we'll read sixteen. It says, "Therefore, pray not for this people; neither lift up cry, nor prayer for them; neither make intercession to me." Let's go up a little further. Start at thirteen. Okay. It says, "And now, because ye have done all these works," says Yahuwah. And I spoke unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not. So these people were hard-headed. They kept sinning. Jeremiah, this is before the temple would be destroyed. This is before, you understand, Necmanezer came in and destroyed everything. They hard-headed. They wouldn't listen. So the Lord says, since you're hard-headed, you won't hearken to me. And this is what he's telling you guys to do right now, to listen. Go ahead and read. He says, reading. and I called you, but ye answered not. So he said, I'm calling you. But you not answer not. Go ahead. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust. Come on. And unto the place which I have, which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. Come on now. And I will cast you out of my sight. Cast you where? Out of my sight. These people were sinning. Much sins. So the Lord says, when you sin, I'm going to do something. Especially you don't follow me and you're my elect, you're my chosen. Remember, Deuteronomy 7 and 6 says he didn't give these laws to no other people. He only gave them to the house of Israel. We're the lawgivers, peacekeepers. So saying that, he says, since you're not following me, I'm going to get you. I'm going to turn my back to you. You read, please. He says, verse 15, Jeremiah 7, 15. I will cast you out of my sight. Come on. As I have cast out all your brethren. Come on. Even the whole seed of Ephraim. That was the ten and a half tribes that was carried away in the time of Hosea. That was the northern tribes he was speaking of. Go ahead. Therefore, pray not for this people. Just pray not for these people. Neither lift up cry. Don't even cry for them. Nor pray for them. Don't pray for them. Neither make intercession to me. Don't, don't make what? intercession for so me. wait a minute he says don't make intercession who's the intercessor now yeah you're sure mm -hmm. he said don't even go through my son to come to me if they sent him he said, he said don't make intercession to me go ahead for i will not hear you I, he don't even hear your prayers if you pray for sinners he don't hear you now just to imagine he was like this with us, our nation, for being disobedient. So what do you think he's doing to Rex? Say that one more time. Come on. What, what do you think he's doing to other people? Exactly. This is his children. Right. See, they didn't even know what sin. What is sin? Transgressing No, go ahead. Go ahead. Read it. Let's read it for people okay. who didn't know. First, First John, John 3 and 4. Go there. Folks, we just break this down real quick because you got to know what sin is. And this is why you've been doing it and didn't know. You, die, you guys don't understand that the churches have put us in a decrepit state. They've taken us to the lowest of low because they taught that the laws are done away with. Read 1 John 3 and 4, please, Sister Micaiah. 
first john 3 and 4 says whosoever commits sin transgresses also the torah so sin is when you don't follow the laws for sin is the transgression of the torah sin is what <laughs> is the transgression of the torah so all of you don't know what keeps you out of what he said i'm gonna give you life and i'm gonna give you death life is following the laws in the first five books we can't do the letter of the law by no means we were judged by it but now with the holy spirit in us the robot coca desk, we should be doing it in the spirit. That's that new covenant. The old testament was what? It was strictly the bones. That's all it was. And with those bones, it was a letter of the law. Two witnesses saw you do something, and if you got caught, you were judged. But the new testament is basically the flesh, the sinews that goes onto those bones. Because we couldn't do it by the letter of the law, it was a curse to the people. But now with the Holy Spirit coming into you, now you've been convicted. Because that's what happens. You get convicted. Now the Holy Spirit is making you want to follow these laws, making you want to mm -hmm. do right. That's why Yeshua had to leave that. That's why in the book of Acts, a Russian wind came. And all of a sudden, these men felt the Rohak Okadesh sin upon them. They all spoke one voice, one mind, and they had one spirit because the Holy Spirit was in them. This is what has to happen. You have to get be born not by just water, but you got to be reborn by spirit. Yes. Let's go to 1 John 5 and 3, please. The Lord said, how do you show me love? Now, I want to stress this to all the people here. This is what the Most High says, 1 John 5 and 3. How do you show me love? For this is the love of God, that we guard his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. They're not what? Grievous. So his commandments. So we don't do religion. Let me stress that. <coughs> we didn't do that disclaimer. We're not religious people. You all right? Excuse me. Oh, praises. All right. Swallow soul, sister. My wife be swallowing, boy. You think she's swallowing acorns, but that be so hard. You good? Okay, baby. We follow laws, judgments, statutes, and commandments. That's what this book is about. This is what it's about. The Lord says, those who love me follow my laws, <coughs> commandments, and I command you to follow my laws. But we were taught by the churches that they're done away with. Some was modified. The law of sacrifice was done away with. You know, I think that's real funny. They'll tell you that the Old Testament is done away with. But they still want you to tithe. Exactly. I don't understand <laughs> that. Got some more water over there. Yes, ma'am. You, you okay? Yeah, just feel like something got caught in my throat. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Go to Jeremiah 11 and 14, please, if you don't mind. Let me go. Yeah. <clears throat> if you can't, I'll read if you want me to. I'd like to go ahead and just bounce off of you. Oh, okay. I should be fine. Are you sure? All right. Yeah. You told me to borrow my water. You took my whole bottle. You're going to gang some water up. I'm just playing with you. Go ahead. Jeremiah 11, what? Yeah, put this cap on. Yeah, so you 11, 14, please. <clears throat> Chapter 11, <coughs> verse 14. Let me do that. Let me go there. You just seem like you have some problems there. <coughs> like comes in my throat. Okay, one moment here. Bear with me, Jeremiah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hold on one second. It <coughs> happens sometimes, mama. You just It says, on. therefore, pray not you for this people. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> you sure? You good? Yeah. You sure? Mm-hmm. All right, let me go back to my notes. Go ahead. <coughs> Jeremiah um, 11 and 14. It says, therefore, pray not you for this people, Neither lift up a cry or a prayer for them. Well, we just went through that and said that. Okay, 14, 11, that's fine. Let's go to uh, Peter 3 and 12, please. One thing I want to point out uh -huh. on this scripture here, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, is in the verse right before that, is he's talking about how they burn incense to Baal. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and these same spirits, Baal and Ashtaroth. Right. It's what's, yeah. what's perverting people's minds today, just like it did back then. Yeah. <coughs> All right, so saying that, Asherah, we know I did a whole lesson on that. That's a spirit of Asherah. That spirit is when the men in the churches start wearing things that look like dresses. It's also a spirit when men start sharing their wives in bed. And pedophilia. And also the main thing they were doing was pedophilia. The children were being taken um, mess. And remember the Bible says, I was reading the other day, the Lord said the priests would be profane and they would start abusing children. Mm -hmm. So this is already prophetic, folks. 
So the Lord does not want us with any sinners praying for them. These people are cursed. Yes. As a matter of fact, I was trying to find a prayer of, uh, was that Paul? The, 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 uh, what was that we were trying to find with the testament of the man who was being tortured? Oh, Apocalypse, Apocalypse of Paul, Paul and Apocalypse of Peter. And I couldn't figure out what book was in. If you guys know, give it to us real quick. It's Apocalypse of Paul and Apocalypse of Peter. And I went through the pseudo and I went through the 54 book Apocrypha. I went through a few books. But I was moving so fast today because I've been running all day. Um, but th it, there's a demon in there. And, and, and when the prophet saw a man was flesh was being skint off his body, his tongue was being taken out. Then they, flipped, they, they stripped his body down like 50 times. They gave him, each angel gave him 5,000 lashes. It was 50,000 angels. They say, what happened? What did this man do? They say, this is one who abused children. This is what the Lord does to them. And then they put his body back together again and started all over again. That's for eternity. It was for now. eternity he suffered. So this is something serious. When you deal with the Lord's children, we can't fathom these things. Go you ahead. know, and you want to be careful by not letting your children sleep over folks' house. You right. know. I was gonna go with that in the next oh, sentence. Okay. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't got that yet. <clears throat> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. All right. Just be careful out here. Yeah, These on. spirits of Astaroth. Let's go to Peter. Jail. Let's go to Peter, if you don't mind, sweetheart. Let's mm -hmm. go to Peter 3 and 12, please. First Peter or yeah. second? You got First Peter 3 and 12. Yes, ma'am. First Peter 3 and 12. Let's see where we're at here. First Peter chapter 3. Let's see. 12. First Peter 3 and 12. Go ahead and read, please. For the eyes of Yahuwah are over the righteous. So the Most High's eyes are watching who? The, the righteous, righteous people. He's watching whoever's walking in, in truth, who's following his laws, judgment, statutes, commandments. Those are doing in what? The spirit. Go ahead. And his ears are open unto their prayers. His ears are open to whose prayers? The righteous That means prayers. that you come out of sin, you put on white garments. That's what white garments mean, a white linen. And then you start walking right. And when you do make mistakes, and we're going to make mistakes, you go in that closet and you repent. That means you're walking in righteousness because you acknowledge your sins. You repented of those sins. Go ahead. But the face of Yahuwah is against them that do evil. Wait a minute. I thought he loved all sinners. I thought he doesn't care. But the face of Yahuwah is against them that do evil. So the Most High does not want you praying for people who do evil. That is Christianity. Folks, when you come here, you might as well throw Christianity out of the window. All the way. Throw it out the window. Get a, a fork. Get a get a pitchfork. Break the soil up that's like a brick. Get you a shovel. Get your hands, your feet. Dig it deep, 500 feet deep, and throw it in a hole. We have nothing to do with Christianity here. That's what stumbled our people. The Muslim faith, the Christianity faith are the two that have stumbled our people. Huh? Now look at Mecca right now as we speak. The roaches mm. embedded Mecca. The mm. storms embedded Mecca. The locusts. The locusts embedded Mecca. Not once, not twice, but several times. I saw people being washed away and cars floating away in Mecca. Mm -hmm. The Lord is letting them know, just like he let the Egyptians know, that my hand is on this earth. And you guys better stop serving gods of wood and stone. If you don't do it, I'm not only going to take you out, but I'm going to take your children away too. He's showing them right now as we speak. So saying that, the Lord has indignation against false gods right now. Let me turn these comments off here. Oh, praises. I'm going to turn these comments off right here real quick so we don't have any of these nations coming in and trying to dismantle what the Lord is putting together. All praise yeah, to the most they high. They can't do anyway. They be trying. Well, they try. But you got to remember, guys, we, <laughs> the snake can't do what, Sister McCoy? So the snake can't do it, but they try. Mm -hmm. Listen, what are we? Are we not the lost sheep? We lost sheep, right? We've been called black, colored, Negro, African American, every name under the sun, everything but Israel. We're the indigenous people, the Indians. Me and my wife was reading the other day, and we saw something that with sheep, a snake's blood does not, a snake can bite them, but a sheep's blood is anti venom. Then the Lord told us to be, and I said this in the last lesson, then the Lord asked us to be wise as what? A serpent. Who runs this world? Who runs this earth? <laughs> the serpent the serpent's made. children do. But gentle as a lamb so they don't deliver you up. We got to be wise of these people. So you got to know all the little tricks they're doing. Once you start noticing this, you don't become the puppet. 
Too many of our people have been puppets for too long, but the Lord is cutting these strings as we speak. Uh, where we at, Sister Micaiah? First Peter 3, we just read. Oh, praises. We just read First Peter 3. Um, my wife was saying something about sleepovers. Go ahead and talk about that, Sister Micaiah. Well, that was going back to the spirit of Bell and Astaroth. Right. Okay. Y'all remember the last, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, last Pride Month, they were chanting something. And also there was a song made that said, we're here, we're, you know what, we're, we're coming. here, we're steer. We're coming for your children. Yeah. They say, we're here, we're steer. I'm using the steer word. That's, that we're coming for your children. You guys know what we what's mean. going on. And yeah. so. You have to be so careful who your children are around. Don't yeah. let them spend the night. Yeah. There was a, a recent story I saw where this man had his daughter. She's 12. And he had a sleepover for his daughter. He drugged those babies with, uh, he gave them some smoothies that mm. was drugged to make they them They say it was lidocaine or something it was called? Yeah, it was a drug. One of the girls didn't like the smoothie so she didn't really drink it so she faked like she was drugged and this man was molesting those girls you know and the, the young girl texts her mother please no, come no. get me he didn't get to molest them he was going to <laughs> he was going to try but what happened was when she texts they got there in time and they got there before he was able to do anything they said but the point that mm -hmm we're making is this what world do y'all live in when y'all trust your babies going to people's house what world are you living when you trust people come to your house and you don't know what they're doing in their house and then you wondering why your baby have dreams and nightmares or why your baby is acting weird or acting strange folks we got to guard our children do you not understand that there's a spirit of azareth on this earth that spirit is also teaching yeah. the babies with the cartoons how to touch and mess with each other. They put in the cartoon mm -hmm. subliminally. Now you learn that Disney is one of the yeah. main pr right. puppeteers of all of this stuff. <laughs> we had to close down one of them. We got to be aware of our environment. You got to be wise as a serpent, but gentle as a lamb. You need to know what these snakes are, who they are. Don't trust your children at other people's house. Don't trust people at your house. Sleepovers to me are one of the biggest, biggest mistakes in the world. Don't have your children with a tent up in the house. Don't nobody play a doctor. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to fix something in a minute if you want to play doctor. Ain't no doctor in my house. You don't have your kids sitting on the couch with a blanket on them. And you don't know what they're doing with the blanket. Folks, you got to use wisdom. All you guys did this same sneaky stuff when you were young. So if you know this, the, the trappings, you know all the sick things that children do, why would you allow your children? Listen, once it happens, you cannot take it back. Mm -hmm. Once they, once their innocence is gone, it's over. Yeah. Think about all you guys out here have been molested or touched. Think about it for a moment. All you wanted to do, and a lot of times that person who you trust and love to protect you, <laughs> is those people are the main ones doing it. Yeah. And all you can do is go in the shell and pray to the Lord and ask the Lord to take you away. And a lot of people don't want to be on this earth. I, I deal with many people who've been molested or touched. Many. And I'm telling you, folks, that is a very, very bad feeling. It gives you because it makes me want to cry most of the time. Especially when you find out it's somebody close to that person. Such as their father. Or their mother. Or their brothers and sisters. Cousins, uncles, and aunts. The Lord said, curse is the man who puts his trust Amen. in men. I saw one video and the lady left her child with this, her best friend, supposedly. And as soon as she left, she was making the baby do things. And she trusted him, not looking at the child's. <laughs> when your child goes to a house and they start crying or start looking a certain way, you need to be paying attention to that. If you got a baby that cannot talk and you got to take that baby to daycare, as soon as you get that baby, that baby starts screaming, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Babies tend to laugh and smile with those who take good care of them. But yet they're going to laugh, they're going to latch out, and certain things are going to happen when they're being abused, and they can't even talk. We're having this conversation for a reason. We're the Lord's children. Too many of us are walking around with blinders on right now. 
We're pretending like this world doesn't exist when this world is full of darkness. If this world is full of darkness, why do you want your children or your loved ones falling into that pit? Mm -hmm. You can protect them from it with just some wisdom. So these conversations we're having are life-saving conversations and then also to build the kingdom. You know, Yeshua was walking, when his parents was walking, they walked three days before they realized that he was missing. You want to know why? Because then we had laws, judgments, statutes, and commandments. And if you touched a child, you wouldn't be on this earth. We get together every tribe and put them down. If you broke the law, when we touched each other, and this is what I told a brother in the shop today. He goes, well, what's the difference between the YT people? Well, you know, you got black people too. You got black people who snakes too. I said, brother, are you so ignorant or indeficient? Or are you, uh, or, or, are you just on a level where, are you a puppet for somebody? You're trying to equate us to the people that gave us the swine flu? You're trying to equate us to the people that gave us gonorrhea? You're trying to equate us to the people that actually use our babies as alligator bait? You're trying to convert us? You're trying to compare us to the people that hung our people in the hmm. trees? Are you trying to compare our people to the ones who systematically put Planned Parenthood in our neighborhoods to take out the firstborn or the males? Yeah. Are you trying to compare our people to the ones that the Lord said he has an indignation for forever. I say, there's either something short in your mind or you're in a fantasy world. And the brother said, no, he just like the white two women. That's what's going on. I said, okay. Oh. All right, well, that explains what's going on. That, that explains what's going on. I said, the Lord is doing a separation right now. Sure is. I got many people of different nations, and these guys calling me, these YT guys, but their wives don't want to be with them. They realize they're Israel, and they realize they made mistakes. And I try to tell the women, once you made that mistake and you married these men, hey, that's your husband. You still got to follow the laws. Unless that man committed adultery, you made that bed, now you got to lay in it. Hmm. And the only way that it can be broken is if you're being abused, or if that man, you understand, is doing some other thing. He said, well, she's telling me that I can't read her the law because I'm a pastor because the law wasn't given to her. <laughs> Given to him. No, excuse me, the law wasn't given to him, she mm -hmm. said. You a YT guy, you a pastor, you can't teach me nothing. I, I learned from your brother and them. I don't, you can't teach me nothing. He said, brother, I just need some help. I said, listen, brother, <laughs> I agree with her on that one. You can't teach her anything. It's not given to you. You can't even put things in perspective because it's not embedded in your heart as it is with us. I say, but I don't agree with the way she's treating you because she decided to marry you. I say, but I do say this. If she made that bed, she's got to lay in it. But the only way the Lord says that you can divorce is what? Adultery. That's why, ladies, you got to be very careful who you marry. Men, oh, you, you got to be very careful who you lay up and make a baby with. Be so careful who you marry. This is a lifetime of problems. We're having these conversations because we have a big congregation. A lot of these things come up. And too many of our people um, are stuck on petty things, you know? And so it's just different. Um, what was talking about baptism? Um, someone said baptism. They were saying, we do baptism. Can you wear a wetsuit? Why don't you wear a wetsuit if you're going to be in the water? And immediately the Holy Spirit said, show me a vision. Mm -hmm. And it showed me a vision of every prophet and everyone who was ever baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They've never had a wetsuit on. They've never had that. What does water do? It washes away sin. What does water do? It cleanses. So if I put a wetsuit on, I'm obstructing this. So you don't put a wetsuit on. You don't put any barriers between you and the Holy Spirit. You can't put barriers there. And so, no, you have to endure. I think we have how many people have come to the baptism so far? I didn't check it today, but yesterday it was up to 85. Yeah, like 85 or so. All praise <laughs> to the most high. Speaking of that, yes. We're at capacity on the um mm -hmm. on the Passover. Passover so yeah. if you cannot make it and you have RSVP, please let us know. Yeah. Uh let us know. Yeah, yeah. Please do. And if you never responded to the evite, so sorry. Yeah. There's there's no spaces left. Yeah, it filled up real fast, folks. I think we have 137 <laughs> seats. They filled up real fast. People from all over are coming. All praise to the most high. 
Also, if you need special accommodations, mm-hmm. um, the facility where we're having it, the rec center, they do have ramps. And so when you get there and you go up the ramp, basically um, there's a phone number on the e-bike. You could just call and let us know you're there or you can, <clears throat> excuse me. What I can do is put the rec center's phone number maybe on the yeah, e-bike that's too. Yeah. And, or you can call the rec center number right. and somebody will open that door so you can get access to that lower level where the Magnolia room is. Yeah. So crazy. there is some accommodations if you have a wheelchair or power chair or whatever. All praise to the most high. Mm-hmm. And we need to make sure that when you guys, ladies and gentlemen, when you do come to Passover, one thing that's imperative to understand, that is not our day. That is not a day for us. It's a day for the most high. It's a day recognizing when he gathered us with a long outstretched arm and took us, you understand, through the Red Sea. And when he took us through the sea, another thing he did was he showed the other nations his power and he showed his other nation his favor with us. Just like he's going to do again, because we're the two witnesses and this is the third day, we're set on our feet. And when the chauffeur blows, they're going to see us being Mm -hmm. taken out of here. You see, everybody's been bamboozled. Everybody's been hoodwinked. Everybody's been ran amok and totally led astray when they're sitting there talking about the church, rapture, rapture. There is no rapture in the scriptures, period. The Lord says he's taking his children away from the four corners of the earth to the outermost parts where they've been scattered through slavery. So now you got to deal with who was slaves. Now you got to look at the four corners of the earth. Now you got to understand that the two witnesses are the northern southern tribes. So he's going to gather us and get this, the handmaids and servants. So we got to understand that when he comes back, you got to have your lamps full. If not full, you better have at least a quarter way. You need some type of lamp, some type of light, some type. Um, what else you got? You got anything else? I want well, to say it's the saying that there's dark light. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you want to make sure because people they're mixing That's that things, That's but witchcraft. a lot of people are mixing wow. serving the Most High, reading the Bible with a lot of this dark stuff. Stuff that's happening too. When we read that book, I forgot exactly what book that was. It was talking about that light. The people who do witchcraft, people who do astrology, people who do palm readings. People say, "I want to get a reading in all of this." Or astrology, tarot, tarot cards, cards uh, voodoo, crystals, crystals saging. saging, sage ocean. Anybody who doesn't know, sage opens portals to demons. When you start burning it, why do you think Puffy and all them burn the sage? I put a video up where this woman's going through her house. Saging. Right. Yeah. All happened? of a sudden, her refrigerator starts opening and closing by itself. Because you open the portal to Lucifer, the all's above Satan. That's how they come in. You know, so you guys. That's why he said my people perish lack of knowledge. So many of our people don't know what's going on. Saying that, a brother, there's a, there's a saying that we got, and that was amazing. The brother put it. I'm going to show you guys. The brother said, we do not go ham. We go sham. Now, saying that, and he got explanation points behind that. So saying that, I thought that was beautiful because I always say that. He said, brother, man, you sitting there on there, and you said, we don't go ham. We go sham. Because I always said, we got a fire sham in us. And so he was like, man, I have to lose that slogan. So the brother, brother um, Asher, he was nice enough to go ahead and make these shirts. Him and his wife, Him and his Nevaeh, wife. we Ms. sure Nevaeh. appreciate y'all. And we appreciate you guys so much, you know. <laughs> and what I want to do is give an email for you guys. If you guys want some shirts made with fringes on them. Because um, it's hard to get people to make them and make mm-hmm. them right. Now, I do wish I would have had probably a, I can't be greedy, but I wish I was on the back because I was on my motorcycle. I was like, man, I would love to have a menorah on my back. <laughs> you know, or either Yahuwah's name on my back so they can see this. So the next shirts I'm going to get from him, I'm going to have him right on the front, but I'm also going to have the menorah or either Yahuwah or Yeshua's name on my back. That way, when I ride my bike or whatever, you know, everybody can always see we repping the most high. You see, people, when they see our fringes, Deuteronomy chapter 22. Go ahead and read that for me, please. Sister Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 22. Uh, let me see fringes. Yeah, let me see here. I believe it was in Deuteronomy 20. You know, a lot of these precepts I'm saying off the head, my, my head. Hold on. I'm just saying these off the top of my head. Deuteronomy 22 and 12. I was right on praises. 
Read Deuteronomy 22 and 12. It says, you shall make fringes upon the four quarters of your vesture. This is what the Lord was telling Israel. Go ahead. Wherewith you cover yourself. Where you cover yourself. Go ahead. If any man take a woman and go in unto her and hate her and give occasion. That's good. Oh, okay. That's good. So the Lord told us we were going to make fringes. Why do you wear fringes? Well, that's why the Indians wore fringes. You notice the tribal Indians of America, which are our people, they wore fringes. The Lord said that the fringes are a reminder not to sin. Now, just like when we had a physical circumcision, that circumcision was of the flesh. You, you understand? But now the circumcision is what? The heart and mind. So we should be wearing these fringes in our heart. You understand? But we still wear them on the outside as part of our culture, if that makes sense. This shows everybody who sees this, no, we know we Israel. Mm -hmm. They know we know we Israel. And, you know, I had, a, this is ironic. I had this brother um, and he was telling me he, he works at the post office and the brother was telling me, I don't call him, I don't want to, you know, but he was saying that he is in Ohio and he was tell, telling me that the people around him are ish. But the lady at the post office, he equated to as like a mother, but she's Spanish, Hispanic. And he said, for some reason, and you know, when I first went in and we was going through things and I felt like she was a mother, she was talking to me, helped me out. He goes, but man, as soon as I showed her a video of who we were, I started wearing my fringes. He said, man, I saw a whole nother person. He said, man, she started treating me different. He says, and now it's to the point where I want to quit my job because every time I turn around, she makes a smart remark about my clothes or y'all the chosen people and all that. I said, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. why would you want to quit your job? For the devils. Come on. Why would you let the devil burn your house down when the Lord is giving you water to quench all the fires that she's throwing at you? Why would you not understand this in the 14th century that the Spanish people did something? If we worship on the Sabbath, if we didn't refuse, if we didn't eat pork, or if we said that we wouldn't wear white, if we wanted to wear white linen, and they found even if you died and they found out, they would dig the bones up and burn them. I said, You got to know their history, brother. If you know their history, you know why that spirit is in her. Mm. Psalms 83 verse 1 said they all was confederate not one but all of them the Lord said he made all of them drink that cup of dredge but now it's back in their hands and he said it burns her up that, that, that I know we're the chosen I said it's burning all of them up why do you think they lined up to buy us as soon as we went into captivity mm -hmm. all of the many captivities we went through they were lined up to buy us I said they're jealous of us and they're afraid he said, brother, that makes sense. I said, brother, do not let nobody steal your crown. You get a retirement at that place. You got a job. You say you and your mom ain't getting along. You can't go to your mom. So what are you doing? You going to quit your job and be on the street, sleep in the car? Let's use wisdom here. I say, what it is, is Satan is jugging at you. But what you got to do is get, I say, oh, oh, I know what's going on. The most I just told me, he said, what, 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 what? I said, the most I told me every time she jug at you. You don't even never go in the closet and pray. You try to handle it on your own. Mm. You want the weight of the world. Instead of taking that yoke off that the slave master put on, you keep it on your shoulders instead of putting his yoke on, which is not heavy, not grievous, and it gives you peace. You ain't got no peace, but you refuse to take his yoke. Mm. He said, brother, I, oh, my goodness. He said, I, I, I can't even lie. I, <laughs> I haven't gone in. I said, I know. The Lord just told me. Mm. My father told me, you don't go. When these demons are throwing spiritual spirits at you, you don't go back. And throw spiritual beams at them. They got little spears, baby, but the Lord got beams. It will crush them. You go in the closet. You say, Abba, Heavenly Father, this woman just now was picking at me and picking at our people. Father, Heavenly Father, I pray that you get this demon away from me. I pray that you cease and bind that demon. I pray that you do this, Abba, in the name of Yeshua. Now you called on the Holy Spirit. Now you've gone through his son. And now you got angels working with you. I say, son, do you not know your power? Do you not know you're a king and a priest? You say, I know it. I know. I say, if you know it, then why aren't you showing it? <laughs> you're not Elijah. When Elijah was, was going through all the men was from this, and the servants say, what are we going to do? Look at him. Elijah say, we got more with us than they do. The servants say, <laughs> where <laughs> this nigga don't lost his cotton, his picking, and his mind. He don't lost all three of them. We got who? Elijah said, Abba. He reached his hand to the sky. 
He put his palms up and he prayed, Heavenly Father in heaven, he opened his eyes so he can see what I see. And when the Lord heard him, he opened his eyes and those scales fell off. And all of a sudden he saw men on horses with swords drawn with fire from them, chariots. And then he saw myriads and myriads, you understand, of soldiers. Then he saw what he called, um, it, it was fire, fire angels and all types of things behind it. It was myriads, which means tens of thousands. That's why the Lord say, if he's with us, who can be against us? When you guys are going through spiritual battles, you go in that closet, you pray right away, and you let the angels come in. But you got to have unwavering faith. <clears throat> Remember, a mustard seed can move a mountain if you got faith. Yeah. Don't come to the Lord with a devil tongue or devil mind. You praying him, but you ain't believing. He didn't even hear your prayer. Huh? Do not come to him walking one side. Or being walking on the other. Huh? Most people right now, what most people are walking in the middle of the road. The Lord said, I wish you were hot or cold, but since you neither, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. A lot of people being spewed out. Folks, let's use what's given to us. Right now is a restoration period. He's restoring us. But at first, he's got to restore us the inside first. He's cleaning the inside of the cup. And then he'll restore us later with the physical. You see, he cannot put us into a holy land while we're unholy. He cannot take us into an undefiled place while we're defiled. He cannot bring New Jerusalem down to a place that's contaminated. But before he restore us, before the trumpets blow, he's got to clean us out first because we are the church. We're the seven churches of Ephesus children. And this is why he's cleaning us out as we speak. This is why your spirits are drawn here. They're drawn here because it's, alien, it's, it's, it's something saying something's coming, something's coming. We got to get it right. But it's not just something coming. You're even seeing physical things with the eclipse coming over, the earthquakes, the tornadoes, the storms, the volcanoes. Hmm. Huh? The Lord has put it right before our eyes. So now it's not something we got to think about. It's something that we can see. Yes. You know how good it feels to see my brothers and sisters just start speaking to each other now? I remember when I first came to Atlanta. Uh, man, when I first met my wife, that was 26 years ago. And that was before I met my wife when I came here. And I remember that people wouldn't speak to each other. They didn't speak. Now, brothers and sisters, hey, brother, how you doing? Hey, sister, how you doing? It's like an awakening to respect and love each other again. And the Lord is putting that on us. You know what's even more beautiful than all of that? Those people who killed us with a sword, those people who bought and sold us and traded with us, now they're looking at us and speaking and can't break their neck to speak and say hi. <clears throat> These people now understand who we are. They realize that the people that they've been sending money to right now are Satan's seed. All you got to do is look at the perpetual hell they're putting around on the around the earth. And look at what they've done to the Lord's children right here in the Americas. Hmm. Perpetual genocide has happened. Three quarters of our people are gone. Three quarters were taken out by them. It's amazing. I'm going to read 2nd Baruch. I want you guys to start reading these books because you got to understand if you don't know where you came from, you don't know where you're going. One thing I want mm -hmm. to touch, out, touch on. Yes, ma'am. Because I read it earlier. And, uh -huh. um, I mean, well, I think it was yesterday in uh -huh. Proverbs chapter 26, going back to touch on it, baby. nothing touch defiled can get, in the kingdom. can get into the kingdom. That's right. All praises. And what people need to understand here, but it's actually Proverbs 25, verse 5. It mm -hmm. says, take away the wicked from before the king and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Yes. And so here we have Yahusha coming to be our king. So the wicked is going to be removed from him. They're being removed. Yes. <laughs> and this is why people, y'all got to understand something. You're trying to go change people. When you don't have no power to do that, you're trying to force your ways of what the, the Holy Spirit's put on you because you have a righteous spirit on somebody who has an unrighteous spirit. The book of Gad, it says, the Lord said, in the beginning, I called their names. Mm -hmm. And in the end, I called their names. But he said, if I didn't call your name or utter it, how did you ever hear my voice? Mm. Too many people are professing to hear the Lord's voice, but they hear Satan, the Elzebub, of the adversary's voice. You see, he can disguise himself as an angel of light. 
to keep you deceived. You know you're doing wrong. You know you're out there sinning, but yet you still keep being rewarded. Well, who's rewarding you? Because well, it sure ain't my father. Most millionaires are corrupt. Billionaires, we ain't got to go there. That's why the scripture straightway says, like a camel, it's like a rope getting through an eye of a needle. That's how hard it is instead of a, instead of a rich man getting to the kingdom of heaven. Now, the Christian Bible says a camel getting through the eye of the needle. Our book says a rope. So saying that, money cannot save you. Don't put your treasures here on earth, folks. Yeah. You need to start storing up something in heaven right now as we speak. You need to start studying and reading these books. When we give you these books, when we leave you, pick them up and start reading. When you wake up at three in the morning, which is a spiritual hour, because a lot of people are going through spiritual temptations and they're dealing with incubus spirits and maritime spirits and they're dealing with things that are bothering them at night. So typically you're going to wake up at three o'clock, three thirty or four o'clock in the morning. This is the time you pick this book up and start reading. You fill your vessel. You don't empty it. That's right. If you empty it, what do you think is going to come in? An idle mind is what? The, the devil's, devil's workshop. playground in his workshop. All praises. We got to fill ourselves with holiness and this word. It is your covering. And this is why we're reading. Uh, we Last time we were reading, we were reading, and this is why we're reading Baruch. Who is Baruch? Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah had a secretary, and his name was Baruch. Baruch was his scribe. At this time, when Jeremiah was speaking to the Benjamin, Levi, and Judah, this was a southern tribe, and this was in Jerusalem before it was sacked. He was telling the people to get right, to stop doing sinful things. Just like we got that sign coming over America, which is the sign of Jonah, um, on the 8th. And that sign that is coming is the sign of Jonah because it's coming across Jonah, Texas, and then it's crossing eight states that's called Nineveh. And when Yeshua was asked, what is the sign? He said, your adult generation, I'm going to give you the sign of Jonah. And that's that comp that eclipse that's coming over. It's the sign of Jonah. You got darkness coming over places that's called Jonah and also eight different cities called Nineveh. Saying that, folks, the sign of the end is here. Judgment is here. Remember, we got to remember that. What do you have to do? Jonah had to go. He had to beeline to Nineveh and tell him that if you don't change, you will die. And he sat in the building the well for three days in darkness. Folks, we've been in sin. Why, do we, why does it matter the three days of darkness? Remember, we're the two witnesses, Ezekiel 30. When you go to, um, excuse me, when you talk about the two witnesses. And when you talk about Ezekiel 37, the dry bones, you learn that both cases for three days, a time, a time, a time and a half. You understand that we would be asleep or, or, or these dry bones would move. That's three days of darkness. That's three days we didn't have the law. Folks, now we're in the light. Now we know that we supposedly follow the Torah, which is the first five books. Now we've been reading these scriptures to understand that if we don't follow his laws, then we're going to show them love. Now that we're coming out of darkness, what, this is what happened to people. So when Baruch got that book and he wrote it, just like when we got the New King James and, and, and we didn't have all the books and they took out the Apocrypha and all these other books. So the people didn't have the knowledge. So when the time of Josiah, uh, the king, who was 18 years old, when he took office, the well, he was a baby when he took office. He was three, but he was 18 when he really um, started really changing some things and moving things. But the Bible was found. The secret was found. And when Jeremiah them read it and when Baruch read it, the people started crying. They, they couldn't believe it. they didn't have their books, their writings. Mm -hmm. They started crying and they begged Baruch to write a secret. So he wrote this sefer that we're reading today, what you call the sefer. He gave ten and a half tribes. What he did was took two eagles and they flew it to the ten and a half tribes. Then he took two wise men. They took them to Benjamin, Levi, and Judah. These considered the southern tribes. So saying that, these are ancient writings, but these books bring things to light. And so we're going to read a little bit. So we're going to read 2 Baruch chapter 2, verse 28. I'm going to start, and then Mrs. Micaiah kind of go. And sometimes I'll stop for hold a on, minute. Hold on. You say that again, what we're reading? I thought you told me. Chap kind of... Chapter 28. Okay. Yeah, okay. It sounded like you said chapter 2, verse 28. No, chapter okay. 28. Okay. okay. I said 2 Baruch 28. Okay. That's what, bro. And if I did say that, forgive me. Um, we're in 2 Baruch chapter 28. Okay. And this is going to be in the Sefer. Also, we have it in the 54 Book Apocrypha. And um, what else does see is it in? I don't think it is any other books that I know of. It okay. is in the pseudo, I think. Okay. I think it's in the pseudo. Okay, all praise to the most high. All praise to the most high. Okay, saying that. Second book, 28. 
28. Nevertheless, whosoever understands shall then be wise. So a person who understands will be wise. For the measure of, and the reckoning of the time are two parts and weeks of seven weeks. And I answered and said, it, it is good for a man to come and behold, but it is better that he should not come, lest he fall. But I will say, he's saying it's better for a man not to be born than to be born. But I will say also, while he is also while he who is corruptible despise those things which are corruptible, and whatsoever befalls in the case of those things which are corruptible, so that he might look only to those things which are not corruptible. But if, O oh Yahuwah, those things shall assuredly come to pass which you have foretold me, so do you show this also unto me, if indeed I have found grace in your sight? Is it in one place or in one of the parts of the earth that those things are come to pass? So Baruch's asking these questions. Or will the whole earth experience them? And he answered and said unto me, Whatsoever then befalls will befall the whole earth. Therefore, all who live would experience them. For at that time, so he's not saying certain people. He said, who going to do it? All who live. And see, this is why yeah. it doesn't matter where you move to. You, 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 <laughs> you, can run all, you can't run from this. From what's so coming. Mikhail, say that one more time. Well, I love my husband. It don't matter. Well, I love my wife. Where you live. You can Come on. live anywhere you want. It doesn't matter because he says the whole earth is going to go through this. Get this. No, now, uh -huh, just to put this in context for people who missed the first time we went over Baruch. Mm -hmm. In chapter 27, the angel is breaking down to Baruch. Mm -hmm. The 12 parts that are of things that's going to take place in the latter in days. The end time. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're reading. All praise the most high. For the time will, it says, for, for that time I will protect only those who are found in those self-same days in this land. What are you reading? Second Baruch 29, verse mm -hmm, 2. Okay. Verse 2. I mean, Second Baruch chapter 20, verse uh, chapter 29, verse 2. It says, for the time that I will protect only those who are found in those selfsame days in this land, verse 3, and it shall come to pass when all is accomplished that was to come to pass in those parts that Hamashiach shall then begin to be revealed. And behemoth, so who is behemoth? We got Le Leviathan and behemoth. Where does the behemoth live, Mrs. Magaya? In what was the he woods. Getting? He was living in the woods. Sound like Bigfoot. Yeah, kind he's, of me. No, he's way bigger than Bigfoot. Behemoth takes up land masses. He's huge. Bigfoot ain't nothing compared to Behemoth. Behemoth is the one to kill the Bigfoots. <laughs> okay. okay, so yeah, no. Okay. Behemoth, remember Leviathan and Behemoth were separated. Right. It was right. Behind, that's Leviathan true. is huge. Yeah. yeah, that's true. He can make the waters in the sea melt. His scales are so close that nothing can get through. So Behemoth is a huge creature on land that does judgment. And Behemoth shall be revealed from his place, and Leviathan shall ascend from the sea. These two great monsters which I created on the fifth day of creation, and shall have kept until the time. Then they shall be for food for all that are left. So we'll be eating these. Get this. It says the earth also uh, shall yield its fruit 10,000 fold. And on each vine there shall be a thousand branches. And each branch shall produce a thousand clusters. And each cluster produce a thousand grapes. And each grape produce a core of wine. Wow. One grape going to produce a core of wine. That is amazing. So, okay, I'm, I'm curious. What is a core of wine? Can you look that up, please? How much is a core? How much is a core? Because if one grape, and then I think about Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve sinned, when you read the book of Adam and Eve, what did they eat from? They eat from the fig tree. Mm -hmm. So what did the Lord make them cover themselves up with? A fig leaf. That leaf was so big, that tells you that back then the figs were huge because the leaf covered their whole body. But we know back then everything was bigger. So I'm trying to figure out, and then when the new time comes, how big is a grape cluster going to be? A core of wine. What is a core? 54 gallons, six bushels. So one grape is going to... Uh, uh, 205 liters. It's going to give wow. up 54 gallons of wine. This is how big they're going to be on the tree. Wow. This is how much the Lord is going to increase what we have. This is deep. And behemoth shall be revealed. And let's keep moving. Verse 5. The earth shall also yield its fruit. Okay, I read that. 6. Verse 6. This is Second Baruch chapter 29, verse 6. And those two, those who have Hunger it shall rejoice. Moreover, all they shall behold marvels every day. So all the hungry that we feed and all of that right now, and all those people we go on the streets and we cry, they're not going to be hungry no more. It says, 
for it says, for wind shall go forth from before me to bring every morning fragrance and aromatic fruits. And, the clo and at the close of the day, clouds is still in the dew of health. Man, I like that. It says that there's winds going to go. So the whole earth is going to smell like nothing but perfume. Then it says there are clouds are going to be still in dew. And this dew is going to do what? It's going to heal people. This is amazing. And so now these are the nations now. Remember, we're going to be immortal. This is for the other nations that are going to come and visit Jerusalem. And so I want you all to understand this. And it shall come to pass that at that self same time that the treasuries of manna shall again descend from on high. What does that mean, Sister Makai, to you, verse 8? It shall come to pass at that self same time that the Oh, come on. Most high going to be feeding us. going to be feeding us manna again. Get this. Angels food. Angels food will be eating. And they will eat of it in those years because these are the they who have come to the, com the consummation, consummation of time. Of time. These are the ones who made it to the end. They're going to be eating manna from the heavens. And it shall come to pass after these things, when the time of the advent of Hamashiach is fulfilled, that he shall return in glory. Then all who have fallen asleep in hope of him shall rise again. And it shall come to pass at that time that the treasuries will be opened in which it is reserved, the number of the souls of the righteous. And they shall come forth and a multitude of souls shall be seen together in one assemblage and one thought. And the first shall rejoice, and the last shall not be grieved. For they know that time has come, of which is said. So the dead, when they raise up, they're going to wait. They're going to be rejoicing. Wait a minute, this is the resurrection. Mm. Everybody's going to be around each other. This is why we don't burn our bodies, folks. If you can bury your bodies, put them in sepulchers, if you can put them in the ground, do that. Because just like our ancestors, when we revive, you'll be by your relatives. I'm going to give you this. For they know the time that has come, which is said, the consummation of times. But the souls of the wicked, when they behold all these things, shall then waste away the more. For they shall know that their torment has come and their perdition has arrived. What is perdition? Perdition is when you turn back to sin. That is what perdition is, returning to your sin. Now that sin, what does the rock say? The best way not to sin is what? To remember the end of your mm -hmm. life. So these people who've been sinning, who refuse to put on white garments, who refuse to stop doing the things or returning to their vomit, and they keep doing it, not understanding he's come like a thief in the night, when we're eating, sleeping, marrying, and partying. So on Judgment Day, you understand, they're going to be like the rich man and Lazarus. They're going to be wanting to go back, and it's too late. You can't go back. If you didn't get it right then, how do you think you're going to ever go back and get it right now? Remember, the scriptures say a person is once born, and they only come back for what? Judgment. That's it. You only come back to be judged. So, Mr. Kyle, go ahead and read chapter 31, please. Go ahead. It says, and it... And it came to pass after these things that oh, I... I'm sorry, uh -huh. we're reading, I apologize. We're reading 2nd Baruch in the Sefer or the 54 Book Apocrypha, 2nd mm -hmm. um, Baruch chapter 31. Go ahead. All right. Um, it says, and it came to pass after these things that I went to the people and said unto them, assemble unto me all your elders and I will speak words unto them. And they all assembled in the valley of the Kidron. Mm -hmm. And I answered and said unto them, Hear, O Yasharel. So I want you guys to understand, when you get all these books, he's talking. This is, these books are written by us, to us, for us. They just hijacked them. This is for our people. He's restoring us right now. Listen to these stories. You got to understand the forward and the latter to know who you are and where you're going. Hear, O Israel. Keep reading, please. And I will speak to you. And give ear, O seed of your cold. O seed of who? Your cold. What is seed? That's that's his bloodline. That's his, his bloodline. Line. Go ahead. And I will instruct you. Forget not Zion, but hold in remembrance yeah. the anguish of Jerusalem. Yes, we remember how to destroy our place. Go ahead. For lo, the days come when everything that is shall become the prey of corruption Woo! and be as though it had not been. Come on now. 32? 32 verse 1. But as for you, if ye you prepare your hearts so as to sow in them the fruits of the Torah. So you got to prepare what? Your heart. But how do you prepare your heart? The, the, the mm. first five books, what is it called? The Torah. You got to learn the Lord's laws. He Show says, sow, sow in them. And not we supposed to be sowing seeds? My goodness. Are we supposed to be sowing seeds? Huh? What does a seed do? It sprouts, and then you see the fruit that comes from that person. 
That's Keep going, right. Sister Micaiah. It says, it shall protect you. It shall do what? Protect you. So go back to the beginning and read that again. All right. But we'll start over. 32, second book, 32, verse 1. What does it say? But as for you, if ye prepare your hearts. Your heart and mind are interchangeable, folks. I want you to know that. Go ahead. So as to sow in them the fruits of the Torah. Now, he said... It's harder for a camel. It's like a, a rope to get through an eye of a needle. It's harder for a rope to get through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get in the kingdom. Why does he say that? Because you got to sew this rope into your heart. Not with regular thread. You need a rope to bind it. Yes. A threefold cord cannot be broken. That's that rope. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. That is that rope that goes through that needle. That's what sows mm -hmm. this word inside of you. Even thinking about this agriculture. This is deep. Yes. Where it's saying, sowing them the fruits. Yes. You know, what do you have to do? You have to bury those seeds. You got to bury deep. them deep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then and that's deep because yes. if you think about this, you learn about Abraham. Abraham ended up when he was a little boy, he used to scare off all the crows. When you start reading the account of Abraham, and they would hire him to say a prayer, and the crows would go. But what happened with the crows would do, they would eat the seeds as soon as they put them on the ground. But Abraham is the first one who invented a plow that had an ore at the bottom that split the dirt and the seeds went under the ground so that he could sow them. Our father Abraham is the first one to invent that tool. Now that's written in the book of Jasher. Or it might be in Jubilees. I got to double check. But that's a beautiful thing. Now that I'm seeing this, this is pretty deep. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says, it shall protect you in that time in which El Elohim is to shake the whole creation. Some of the creation? The whole creation. Folks, Israel, when we was on Mount Horan and Sinai, our knees were shaking when he came on the burning bush of the cloud. Your knees are going to be shaking again. Everything and all creatures, all knees will bow because he's going to shake the whole creation. Go ahead. Sure enough. Verse 2. Because after a little time, the building of Zion will be shaken in order that it may be built again. Yes. But that building will not remain but will again after a time be rooted out yes. and will remain desolate until the time. And afterwards, it must be renewed in glory and perfected forevermore. Yes. Therefore, we should not be distressed so much over the evil which has now come as over that which is still to be. So what you worried about here, you worried about the dead, but you need to be focused on the living. This new kingdom that's coming, don't worry about this building that's going to be torn down. You need to be focused on that one that's coming, that's everlasting, that never ends. This is what he's saying. Go ahead. For there will be a greater trial than these two tribulations Come when on. El Elohim will renew his creation. That's when the serious trials will come, when the Lord make this earth new again. This is after that millennial time when they come up against us, Gog, Magog, and Moab, the remnant, the sixth part that's left. After a thousand years when Satan's released for a little while, and then he's going to bring the chariots down. And then he's going to come and do what? He's going to kill all their armies. He's going to throw hell in the lake of fire. Death is going to be thrown in the lake of fire. The angels, some Zizel and Azizel and the 200 angels, and their wives are going to be thrown. And all the sinners are going to be thrown in the lake of fire. And then he's going to make the whole earth new again. The earth and the heavens. Why? New Jerusalem cannot come down to a place that's contaminated. He's got to cleanse it first. Go ahead, Sister Matthias. Verse 7, it says, And now do not draw near to me for a few days, nor seek me till I come to you. Yes. And it came to pass when I had spoken to them all these words that I, Baruch, went my way. And when the people saw me setting out, they lifted up their voice and lamented and said, Whither do you depart from us, Baruch? This and is, for... I'm sorry, this is where we at, folks. I want y'all to hear this part. I want y'all to understand. Baruch, these people did not want him to depart. If you depart from us, go ahead and read, please. It says, whither do you depart from us, Baruch, and forsake us as a father who forsakes his orphan children Come on. and departs from them? Come on now. Are these the commands which your companion, Yahu or Jeremiah the prophet, mm -hmm. commanded you and said unto you? Look to this people till I go and make ready the rest of the brethren in Babel against whom has gone forth the sentence mm -hmm. that they should be led into captivity. And now, if you also forsake us, it were good for us all to die before you than that you should withdraw from us. They didn't want him to leave. He's bringing that word, folks. They said they'd rather die. They'd rather die. 
It's like us right now. You guys are following us and learning. You're following other brothers and sisters and learning. You know, you'd rather die than to leave this word. You'd rather die than to walk away from this light that's finally shining and you've been in a dark place. Mm -hmm. Huh? Now that you finally got light, you can't imagine walking away from it where you're not getting any more light. And then a shadow comes on you and then darkness descends on you again. These people understood it because they've been through the ladder. So now they're thinking about the forward. And that's what we need to be. Let's think about where we've been. Let's think about the depressed state we've been in. Let's think about how our men right now systematically are looked down upon and our women are treated and they're also dressing and acting like because of the programming. Mm -hmm. We're in a depressed state, folks. Go ahead, Sister McKay. But this is why, too, we need to sow this this word in our hearts you so that that to. light is within us because right you know you what does the word say cursed is the man that put his trust in men that's it and you're not gonna always have access to uh books. these us or or a lot of people yeah. especially when they shut things down this is why it's imperative that you have a personal relationship yes. with Yeshua yes not with the rabbi not with your preacher not with your deacon your elders not with your friend, your cousins, your mother, your brother. Huh? Not with us. You need to have a personal relationship with Yeshua. Because on Judgment Day, you're going to be standing there by yourself with him, being judged. And that is not fun. Well, I, we had a taste of how, what he does. Just a taste. We had a taste of it. It was serious. I was getting whoopings from the inside out. Remember I told you that? Mm -hmm. I felt lashes from the sins I've done. I felt lashes beating me from the inside out, not the outside in. He's cleaning the inside of this cup. That's right. In order for you guys to go anywhere, when he he's getting ready to come back. This clip's coming over. It's for a reason. It's the sign of Jonah. He's saying, you know, the end is here. And that represents, it's a tab which represents what? 400 is the number that go with it. That he's confirming it's the sign of Jonah. It's the sign of Jonah. It's crossing. The Jonah, first Texas. city is hitting is Jonah, Texas. Then eight. Yeah. Oh, my bad. It's okay. You right. Then eight cities afterwards right. called Nineveh. That's right. So if folks, that ain't confirmation, that's the sign of Jonah, right there. And now everybody's found out America is the most, where almost all the biblical places happen that we've been lied to, bamboozled, hoodwinked, and ran amok, and definitely we were led astray. Now we're realizing that this is the oldest continent on earth. This is where it started, and this is where it's been the end. That's why you got the alpha sign on America with the eclipse, and this is why you got the mega sign, the top, which means the end. This is where it began, and this is where it's been the end. Second Baruch, chapter 34. And I answered and said unto the people, far be it for me to forsake you or to withdraw from you, but I will only go to the holy of holies to inquire of El Elohim concerning you and concerning Zion. And if in some respect I should receive more illumination, and after these things, I will return to you. So I'm going to go up to the Holy City. And I'm going to see, can I get illuminated a little bit more? <laughs> Lord, show me a little bit more light. Give me more light. Give me, give me a little bit more light. I need to be illuminated more. Remember, I told y'all, light gets brighter, just like the darkness gets darker. Boy. It's progressive. Oh, give it up, girl. I am. It's my <laughs> baby, boy. I love it. The more you walk in the light, and Baruch goes through this later, he says, those who are walking more righteous in this world, their light's going to be brighter in the kingdom. Everybody you walk past and they go, oh, that boy wasn't playing when he was on way back in the day. When he was on earth, he, but look at how bright he is. That's why you're sure you can't even look on his face. He's pure light, pure righteousness. And the Lord gave me that in the vision. I saw it just like, just like I'm talking to you guys. So saying that, the more you walk righteous here, the brighter your light is in the kingdom. Did he not say we're going to surpass the angels? You want to know why? The angels are not being tempted like you. They're not being tested. You're being tested. They're not. Adam, they bowed down to Adam. He put us over the angels. Why do you think Enoch left this place and went to be over the angels? Because he wasn't tested. He was tested where they weren't. He was so righteous here that the Lord knew that his light would be 3,000 times brighter there. And that's why he took him up. And he never died. He was translated. Second Baruch, chapter 35. And I, Baruch, went to the holy place and sat down upon the ruins and wept. And I said, Oh, that my eyes were springs and my eyelids a fount of water of tears. For how shall I lament for Zion? And how shall I mourn for Jerusalem? Because in that place where I am now prostrate of old, the high priest offered a holy sacrifices 
and placed her on the incense of fragrant odors. But now our glory has become made into dust and the desire of our souls into sand. And he was lamenting pretty hard. When I said these things, I fell asleep. I fell asleep there and I saw a vision in the night. And lo, the forest of trees planted in the plain and a lofty, rugged, rocky mountain surrounded it. And a forest occupied much space. And lo, over against it arose a vine. And from under there went forth a fountain peacefully. Now the fountain came to the forest and was stirred into a great waves. And those waves submerged that forest. And suddenly they rooted out the greater part of the forest and overthrew the mountains and overthrew all the mountains which were round about it. And the height of the forest began to be made low. And the top of the mountains was made low. And the fountains prevailed greatly, so that they left nothing of that great forest save one cedar tree. And also, when it, when it had cast it down and had destroyed and rooted it out of the greater part of the forest, so that nothing was left of it, nor could its place be recognized. Then the vine began to come with the fountain in peace and in great tranquility. And it came to a place which was not far from that cedar. And they brought the cedar which had been cast down to it. And I beheld, and lo, a vine opened his mouth and spoke, and it said to the cedar, Are you that cedar which was left in the forest of the wickedness? And by whose means persisted, and was wrought in all those years, and goodness never? And you did keep conquering that which was not yours, and to that which was yours you did not, you did never show compassion. Hmm. You did you get this? You did not keep extending your power. Get this. And you did keep extending your power over these who were far from you. And those who drew nigh to you, you did hold fast in toils of your wickedness. And you did lift up yourself always as one that could not be rooted out. That's that pride. Is that not the mindset that is that pride. of the powers that be today? Come on now. Come on now. He said, but now your time is spent sped and your hour is come and this is where we're at right now their time is spread and their hour is come and they're afraid like mother like daughter this is deep the daughter of babylon the daughter of babylon <laughs> thus it says do also therefore depart o cedar after the forest which departed before you and become dust with it and let your ashes be mingled together and now recline in anguish and rest in torment till your last time come in which you will come again and be tormented and be tormented still more. Wow. It says, let your ashes be mingled together. Now recline in anguish and rest in torment till the last time come, and which you will again be tormented still more. This is pretty deep, folks. And this is what's going on right now as we speak. 37. Go ahead, Reese. Sure, Go ahead. It says, and after these things, I saw that cedar burning and the vine growing itself and all around it and the plain. Uh, full of unfading flowers, and I indeed awoke and arose. See, the Lord comes to you, as Job 33 says, in a dream and a vision. When you guys are going to learn something, when you guys get these dreams and visions, a lot of times the Lord is giving you instruction. And so you need to take heed to them. Or warnings. Or warnings is what he's too. doing, is what he does. Yes. A lot of times we have to fast in order to get these visions or dreams. Go ahead, Sister McCoy. Chapter Second Baruch 38, verse 1. It says, And I prayed and said, Oh, Yahuwah, my Adonai, you do always enlighten those who are led by understanding. Yes. Your Torah is life. His Torah is what? Is the life. Torah is what? Is life. Those first five books is life. How do you show me love? By following my laws, First John 5 and 3. What is sin? First John 3 and 4. Not following the Lord's laws. That sure. Torah is life. It's what, when you follow it, and you have a moral compass now, when you don't follow it, you take that compass, you take that arrow, and you just spin it, and you don't know which That's way it's right. going to go. And now you understand why the devil's organizations are teaching you that the Torah is done away with. It's even deeper than that. They actually change the maps and the compass, too. Come on. They America's kill, actually true east. Kill, steal, and, and destroy. destroy. America's true east, but they tell you it's west. The old maps say it's east. It's the ancient Orient. It's the ancient Ethiopia. Tamaru, Turtle Island. So everything is turned around. Go ahead. And your wisdom is right guidance. Ooh, go ahead. Make known to me, therefore, the interpretation of this vision. 
for you know that my soul has always walked in your Torah, and from my earliest yes. days, I departed not, not from, from your, your wisdom. wisdom. That Torah is wisdom. Can I say something before you go into 39? Um, what I'm going to tell you, no? Well, go I'm ahead, baby. catch you go ahead, before go ahead, you baby. start reading. Yes, ma'am. Do y'all see, because some of y'all mm -hmm. have been, that's been a lot of y'all coming to us like, I had this dream, I had this dream. Right. But do y'all see here mm -hmm. how Baruch yeah. went to the Most High mm -hmm. in prayer and yeah. how he prayed and asked for clarity and understanding and on what the Most High was trying to say? And how did he come to him to give it to him? He went to him in prayer. You got to have a strong prayer life and you can ask the Most High for anything. Now, typically back then, if David, King David, you understand, this is before David and all, but typically um, back then, we got to understand something that either you got in a dream or a prophet had to go or a seer had to come tell uh -huh. you. So it's three ways. A dream, a seer, a prophet would come show you or tell you what was going on with the Most High. So he had different ways or outlets that he would yes. do things. In this case, it's in a dream and a vision. Um, go ahead. Sister 39 McCain. verse 1. It says, and he answered and said unto me, Baruch, this is the interpretation of the vision which you have seen. So let me give you the interpretation of this vision. Go ahead. As you have seen the great forest which lofty and rugged mountains surround it. This is the word. This is what? The word. Go ahead. Behold, the days come and this kingdom will be destroyed, which once destroyed Zion. What? And it will be subjected to that which comes after it. So we know that Rome destroyed who? Zion and Tyre. So what's going to happen to them? They're going to be subjected to destruction. Let's go. Let's keep reading. Verse 4, moreover, that also again after a time will be destroyed, and another, a third, will arise, and that also will have dominion for its time. So we're talking about different. Destroyed. So he's talking about different conquering civilizations that happen over time. It's that Daniel 9 prophecy. Right. It's the Daniel 9 prophecy. Go ahead. And after these things, a fourth kingdom will arise whose power will be harsh and evil, far beyond those which were before it. And it will rule many times as the forest on the plain, and it will hold fast for times and will exalt itself more than the cedars of Lebanon. Yes. And by it, the truth will be hidden. Mm. And all those who are polluted with iniquity will flee to it. Now, I believe this is the son of perdition. This is the Rome, the Vatican, where everything's hidden. All books got to go through them. And now everybody flees to this false doctrine. They're fleeing to these different religions. Remember, all religions go kiss whose ring? The Pope's. But notice too, it says all those who are polluted with iniquity will go to it. Say that again. All those that are polluted with iniquity will flock to it. Do y'all understand what that means? <laughs> that all of you people out here who got into your religions, because the Lord's children are religious, we follow one God with authority. We don't do religions. We follow laws, judgments, statutes, and commandments. Those religions have gotten you polluted. With sin. With sin. Because they told you the laws are done away with. They told you to worship holidays. They told you to worship on a Sunday. They tell you all these things which are totally against the Torah and scripture. They told you don't even follow the Torah. When you're learning now over and over and over again, the Torah is life. Without the Torah, you can't get in the kingdom. That's your foundation. This is, the, this is why he calls them polluted. This is what stirred the children, got us astray to the point where we can't even use the gifts and our gifts that is given us because we're doing things the opposite of what the Lord told us. But my people perish for lack of knowledge. Since you don't know nothing from the empty, empty. The full, full. But my people who listen, the full, full. Let's keep reading, please. Sister Micaiah. It says, and by it, the truth will be hidden, and all those who are polluted with yes. iniquity will flee to it. Come on now. As evil beasts flee. And it will come to pass when the time of its consummation that it should fall has approached, that it, I'm sorry, that it, it should fall, fall right. has approached. Then the principate of my Mashiach will be revealed, yes. which is like the fountain and the vine. Mm. And when it is revealed, it will root out the multitude of its hosts. Come on now, let's keep going. And as touching that which you have seen, the lofty cedar which was left of that forest and the fact 
that the vine spoke those words with it, which you did here. This is the word. Mm. Come on now. The last leader of that time will be left alive. So the last leader is going to be left what? Alive. Go ahead and read. When the multitude of his hosts will be put to the sword. Now, this is when Gog, Magog, Moab, Russia, Iran, and China, Ezekiel 38, 39. This is called a day of the Feast of the Birds. This is when the Lord's great feast is going to happen. The Feast of Captains, the Feast of Kings, all of them bringing their buckles, their shears. This is the Battle of Armageddon. This is in the Red Sea. This is those who are lining up right now by Mount Olives, which is by Jerusalem. This is that great battle that he's talking about, the Feast of the Birds. We have the carcasses lay. That's where you'll find the eagles. What is Rome and all these different nations or European symbol? The eagle. I want y'all to get this. Let's keep going, please. All right. And he will be bound and they will take him up to Mount Zion and my Mashiach will convict him yes. of all his impiety. Yes, yes. And will gather and set before him all the works of his host. Come on now. And afterwards he will put him to death mm. and protect the rest of my people. We'll take the rest of who? My people. It's all about our people, folks. They keep putting the church in here. This ain't about the church. Well, it simply is. We are the church, but... Mm -hmm. They interject it. Go ahead and read. Which shall be found in the place which I have chosen. Well, we got to go to and run to. <laughs> I thought we got to go there and run somewhere. My people which shall be found in the place which I have chosen. Because he's going to get swing low, sweet chariot, carry me home. The chariot's going to swing low. The ships of Tarsh is going to come up to shore. And when they do, if your spirit ain't right, that penino gland, they've been experimenting on us for so long. That's spiritual. If that thing is not right because you're not walking with light and have no oil in your lamps, when you try to touch these ships, when you try to get on these chairs, you will not be able to get on them. If you got a nickel in you, you are not getting on them. They're going to pass you by. He said he's going to gather us and take us to a place that he chose, mm -hmm. not, not what you chose. Go ahead. So all you women and you ladies and, and that are running to Africa, you men that are running to these places, and you running everywhere, and now you're, you're being Put yourself um, unalive, putting yourself in danger because you don't understand biblical prophecy. Or if you do understand it, you're undermining it, just like Ephraim did, and they went out and lost 40,000 men when they tried to leave Egypt early. Come on. Hmm. I want y'all to understand you cannot do these things. You've got to, you've got to make sure that you understand biblical prophecy. The Lord said he's going to gather us from the four corners of the earth. He said he's the one that's going to be doing this. So saying that, we need to understand something. We cannot make one hair white or gray, folks. You've got to understand that the Lord is in control of everything. Let me turn this off one second. I thought I did. My apologies. Uh, this is the ministry phone. Let me turn that off. So if he's going to gather us, and he just said right here, read that again, please. Uh, this is Second Baruch chapter 40. 40. Go ahead, read. It says, um, you want me Verse to start two. over? Verse 2, no, number oh. 2, start over too. And afterwards, he will put him to death and protect the rest of my people, which shall be found in the place which I have chosen. Now, we know that's a millennial time, too. We know that this is when, also, we know that when they're going to come up as an on wall cities. And when they do these things, that's when the word or the sword of the Most High's mouth is going to come down and consume them. And this is when the whole earth is going to be made new again. And then we'll no longer have the sun. The Most High's light is going to light the earth. Because he's going to be over us after the thousand years. He's going to be over us himself. Now, don't get me wrong. Yeshua is still going to be ministering us on the inner courts to Israel. The so-called Levites are going to be ministering to the Gentiles on the outer court. The Essenes are going to be ministering to the Most High and Yeshua. These are the ones who gave us the Dead Sea Scrolls in 1948. These are Zadok's children. So uh, we're on Second Brook, um, chapter 40, verse 3. Go ahead. It says, and his principate will stand forever until the world of corruption is at an end and until the times aforesaid are fulfilled. Yes. This is your vision and this is its interpretation. All praises. Second Brook 41. And I answered and said, for whom and for how many shall these things be? Or who will be worthy to live at that time? For I will speak before you everything I think. And I will ask you regarding those things which I meditate on. For I see, for lo, I see many of your people who have withdrawn from your covenant and cast from you and cast them the yoke of your Torah. Wow. So they, they, and, they and, and they cast from them the yoke of the Torah. They're not using the Torah no more. Does it sound familiar, folks? 
Hmm. Does that sound familiar today? Why do you think they, they teach us this stuff? This is deep. For low, uh, four, verse four, it says, but others again have seen who have forsaken their vanity and fled for refuge beneath what? Your wings. Mm -hmm. What scripture is that, Sister Micaiah? What? Well, he says, I'm going to keep you under my wing. Psalms, Psalms 91. Same Psalms 91. This is what this is talking about. Psalms 91. That should be your anthem, folks. Write Psalms 91 down. I want you guys to go read it. Whenever you have fear, you're going through things. I want you to write it down. This is what he's referring to. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. It says, what therefore will, will be to them? It says, what therefore will be to them? Or how will the last time receive them? Or perhaps the time of these will assuredly be weighed. And as being, being inclined, will they be judged accordingly? Second Baruch 42. And he answered and said unto me, These things also I will show to you. As for what you said, to whom will these things be? And how many will they be? To those who have believed, there shall be the good which was spoken aforetime. And to those who despise, there shall be the contrary of these things. And as for what you said regarding those who have drawn near and those who have withdrawn, this is the word. As for those who were before subject and afterwards withdrew and mingled themselves with the seed of mingled peoples, that time was of, was of the former and was accounted as something what? Exalted. Exalted. So the, he said, you know, our people before, we mingle with mingled people. And we always want to mix with them. We want to integrate. You know, we want to be part of y'all. We want to join your churches. We want to join your groups. We want your school system. We want everything y'all got. We want to be part of you. Didn't go well for us, did it? No. We lost a lot of our wealth when we did that. Hmm? Now they've been keeping us in perpetual servitude ever since, just like the last Pharaoh did. So this is what he's talking about. Where are we at? Verse, verse 5, verse five. 42, verse 5. Second Baruch 42, verse oh, 5. Oh, praises. And as for those who before knew not, but afterward knew life. What does that mean, Sister Micaiah? Verse five, read the first part. And as for those who before knew, knew not, not, but afterwards, but knew, afterwards what? knew life. What does okay. that mean? Knew the Torah, learned the Torah. That's how do you what know? We just read. How do you know the life? The Torah is life. Okay, all praises get this. It says, and mingle only with what? The seed of the people which has separated itself. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So the ones that's going to go in the kingdom are the ones of the seed. What is the seed? Yes, sure Israel right. that have done what? Separated so themselves from who? From the mingling. From of the mingling people. of these other people out here. Are y'all getting this? Do y'all understand that these people cannot go to the wedding party? They cannot be on Mount Zion. When you learn about the multitude which no man can remember, that's Second Ezra. It tells you it's a ten and a half tribes carried away, a multitude which no man can remember with palms and branches in their hand and white linen. Folks, I want y'all to get this. That's why Zechariah 8.23 says, 10 men from every nation that hold skirt of a Jew say, we will go with you because we know the Lord is with you. This is about Israel's salvation. I want you guys to understand that we've been bamboozled, hood, ran right amok, and let us straight. They've taken all of our information and turned it against us. Mm -hmm. And then they put themselves in our books. I think that's something. They even took the Messiah and gave him blue eyes and blonde hair. Hmm. But Revelation 1.14 says, skin like brass, Eyes red with wine and feminized and burnt in a fire, and then they put a dress on it. Where are we at? Verse five. It says, "I'm gonna read it mm, again." Okay. And as for those those who before knew, but afterwards knew life, and mingled well, only with the seed of the people which separated itself, the time of these is of the latter, and is accounted as something exalted. And at the time, it says, "In time shall succeed time, and season to season." And one shall receive from another. Then with the view of the consummation shall everything be compared according to the measure of the time and the hours of the seasons. For corruption shall take those that belong to it and life those that belong to it. And the dust shall be called and there shall be said to it, give back that which is not yours and raise up all that you have kept until this time. Now this is after the thousand years is over. Everybody's going to come back. Everybody's going to be judged. Let's get this. So let's kind of read. All right. Please, Second man. Baruch 43, verse 1. Mm -hmm. But you, Baruch, direct your heart to that which has been said to you and understand those things which have been shown to you. 
for there are many eternal consolations for you. Mm -hmm. For you shall depart from this place and you shall pass from the regions which are now seen by you. Come on. And you shall forget whatsoever is corruptible. Say this again. He says that you we're going to do what, Sister Micaiah? We're going to forget what's co what, whatever's corruptible. Whatever's we're corruptible, forget it. You, you're not even going to know it. He says you're going to forget it. Keep reading, please. And shall not again recall those things which happen among mortals. So when we're changed and made immortal, you won't remember those people who you trying to convince to get righteous. You won't remember your children who are sitting there in sin. You won't remember your wife who's committing adultery or your husband committing adultery. You won't remember those people who become rainbow people. You won't remember those people, you understand, who persecute and they also oppress children and they do things, horrible things to babies. Mm -hmm. These people in this time, we won't even remember. Why would he give us a beautiful world that's incorruptible and have us remember corruptible things? Come on. How can he take that stony heart away? And give us his spirit. His spirit is a pure spirit, a righteous spirit. Why would he ever want us to remember anything that's unrighteous? Yes. This is not rocket science. Go ahead, Sister Micaiah. Second Baruch 43. Verse 3. Go ahead. It says, go therefore and command your people and come to this place. Wait a minute. Place. He says, do what? Command your Command them. Go ahead. And come to this place. And afterwards, fast how seven many, days. How many days? Seven. Folks, when you fast. When you starve the body, you feed the spirit. Yes. Fasting teaches you how to abstain from things in this world. When you fast, it gets rid of demons. It gets rid of sickness. My mother has stage four cancer. She fasted for a whole week. No water, no food. And all the cancer was completely gone. I want y'all to understand this. When you cast out demons and spirits mm -hmm. when you fast. But not only that, you're in a spiritual place yes. now. Now the Lord can come in and fill your vessel. This is why some demons, you got to fast. And pray to get rid of them. Go ahead and keep reading. Yes. It says, go therefore and command your people and come to this place. And afterwards, fast seven days. And then I will come to you and speak with you. Oh, praises. And I Baruch went forth from death. And I came to my people. And I called my firstborn son, Glad Elias, my friends, and seven of the elders of the people. And I said unto them, behold, I go unto my fathers according to the way of all the earth. But withdraw ye not from the way of the Torah. He said, withdraw you not away from what? From the Torah. We keep going back to the Torah. But guard and admonish the people which remain. He said, withdraw from the commandments of El Elohim. For you see that he whom we serve is just. And our creator is no respecter of what? Persons. Persons. And as you see, and as, as, as see ye what has befallen Zion and what has happened unto Jerusalem. For the judgment of El Elohim has been thereby thereby be made known and his ways, which though through through past findings out are what? They're right. All his ways are upright. For if you endure and persevere in his fear and do not forget the Torah, the time shall change over you for good, and you shall see the constellation of Zion. You will see the new city. If you have fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is beginning of what? Wisdom. wisdom. You got to get you some wisdom. Wisdom comes from this word. Verse 8. Because whatsoever is now is nothing, but that which shall be shall be is very great. For everything that is corruptible shall pass away. Everything that dies shall depart, and all the present time shall be forgotten. Nor shall there be any remembrance of the present time, which is defiled with what? Evils. Evils. The Lord does not even want us to remember this stuff. You know why a lot of people, you guys cannot see the kingdom? You know why you can't see New Jerusalem? You know why you can't see that city that he's built? He wants it to be a surprise. He showed it to me when I was 29 or 30. I remember I came to you when we was younger. Yeah, he and showed I, it. And I had a vision. He showed me the kingdom. He showed me the pretty gates. It was so high you couldn't see them. Then he showed me plants in a, and I smelled fruit and trees that I could never see. Then he showed me all this stuff. And he showed me so I could testify to my wife. And then a few days later, it's like he took it away. Because he wants us to be surprised. He wants us to sit there and be amazed at what he's given us. He said, in my father's house, there's many mansions. Yes. And in those houses, he said, I know everything you want before you even ask. When you go in that house, everything y'all want won't be there. But you can't receive that mansion, you understand, until you get this house clean first. Then you can set it on that property. But until you clean this property, you cannot get on that property. Nothing defiled is getting in the kingdom. Nothing defiled is getting into the kingdom. Why do you think Revelation 21 said there's 12 gates? 
that the 12 gates is 12 angels. When you look and when you look above the angels' heads on the gates, written are the 12 tribes of Israel. But those angels have what? Fiery swords at those gates. Yes. Just like when we read about what? The Garden of Eden. Angel with a fiery sword. It's a spiritual city. The place where we're going is beautiful. The reason why Edom, Rome, Tyre, and these people will not give us reparations, why they give everybody else out their money, but they won't give it to us, because they know that we inherit the whole world. And they're jealous of us. They feel as though we don't deserve it. So they feel like, you know what? This is our kingdom. This is the only time we're going to reign. The book of Obadiah said that Edom and Tyre, Rome, or what you call um, Japheth's children, the ones that make up the 10 European nations, they'll never have a kingdom again. This is it for them. This is why they're trying to enjoy everything they got. But you can look at all the wickedness that's going on. And brother, it says that blood will be touching what? Blood. They're all fighting each other right now. All right, what number are we on, Sister Micaiah? Okay, Second Baruch 44, verse, uh, verse 7. Uh, mm -hmm. It says here, for if you endure and persevere in the fear and do not forget the, to the Torah, the times shall change over you for good and you shall see the consolation of Zion. I already read that, but because whatsoever is not now is nothing, but that which shall be is very great. For everything that is corruptible shall pass away, and everything that dies shall depart, and all the present time shall be forgotten. Nor shall there be any remembrance of the present time which is defiled with evils. For that which runs now runs unto vanity, and that which prospers shall quickly fall and be fall and be humiliated. For that which is shall shall for that which is to be shall be the object of desire and for that which comes afterwards shall we hope for what does that mean faith is the substance of things hoped for but what yet not seen for it is a time that passes not away and the hour that comes which abides forever and the new world comes which does not turn to corruption those who depart to its blessedness blessedness and has no mercy on those who depart to torment and leads not to perdition those who live in it for these are they who have who shall inherit that time which has been spoken of and there is the inheritance of the promised time these are they who have acquired for themselves treasures of what wisdom wisdom, wisdom comes from where above. above it comes from the most high this word but he says they're storing up what treasures of wisdom mm -hmm. that means you're reading constantly he says, wherever your heart is, that's where what? Your treasures are. You need to store up these treasures. Get this. For what these are those, mean? yes, these are those who acquire for themselves treasures of wisdom. And with them are found stores of understanding. He says, stores of understanding. And from mercy have they not withdrawn the truth. And of the Torah have they preserved. For unto them shall be given the world to come. But the dwelling of the rest are many shall be in the fire. Folks, I want y'all to get this. When you start coming back to this Torah, following the Lord's laws, when you start doing this in the spirit, not the letter of the law, but doing it because you want to do it. This shows the Lord the fruit that comes from you. And now you've been acceptable, just like Cain, when his animals, he gave the best of his flock, but Abel gave the worst of his fruit. So he didn't accept this fruit, but he burned up Cain's flock and he took it and he accepted it. This is what he wants from us. He wants the best from us. That's why he told Ezra, I give my children the laws to see the fruit that comes from them. So, so can I go ahead and read? Where we at? All right. Second book, chapter 45. It says, do ye therefore so far as ye are able instruct the people for that labor is ours. Yes. For if you teach them, you shall quicken them. If you do what them? If you teach them, you, you shall, shall quicken them. What does them. quicken mean? Look up quicken, it's, please. It's an increasing Word. of life, a reviving, it's a, what? a refreshing. It's a what? It's often referred to the resurrection from the dead. So now we're talking about Ezekiel 37. Oh, Father, do you see these old dry bones? Come on. Oh, I see them, but they don't move. Father, yeah, can you make bone to bone, flesh to flesh? And he did. Send them, send them. But these bones could not move into what happened. The four winds had to come in them. What is Yahuwah's name? He who breathes what? Life. He's the four winds. And when he breathes that life, these dry bones stand up. And these bones are what? Quickened. They're mortified. Now you got life. This is a spiritual resurrection we have right now. That's right. We've been spiritually dead. Yes. For three days we've been dead. But now yes. we stand on our feet. We're testifying. The old world, the kings are coming to our life. 
Now that the kings are coming to our light, now that they see this, these nations are afraid. That's how we know that the chauffeurs are getting ready to blow and he's going to say what? Come up hither. I'm just waiting. Because the Lord right now is quickening us. He's putting bone to bone, flesh to flesh. And now with these scriptures, we got the four winds in us. Now we're standing, we're walking. And you can hear me right now because I'm showing up talking. Oh, praise Let's keep going, Teach please. It. Let's keep Teach going. Teach it. Teach it. Not taking one precept and running with it. We're going to the four in the lab to give understanding. Right. We're in second book, chapter 46. It says, and my son and the elders of the people answered and said unto me, has El Elohim humiliated us to such a degree as to take you from us quickly? Come on. And truly, we shall be in darkness. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, y'all keep worrying about three days of darkness. I want you to understand what darkness means. Read it over again, and let's <laughs> understand what darkness is. Uh, second Baruch 46 verse 1 it Go ahead. says and my son and the elders of the people answered and said unto me has El Elohim humiliated us to such a degree as Come to on. take you from us quickly Come on. and truly we shall be in darkness and there shall be no light to the people who oh, are left now we're learning what darkness is if you don't have this word you don't have the Torah if you don't have understanding what have we been since we've been in these churches? What have we been since we've been through all these darkness. different doct doctrines? We've been in darkness. Now that we got the truth, man, we can see the light. Now we realize we are children of the light. But you need this word to come out of that darkness. Yes. We've been in darkness for three days, folks. Time and time and time and a half. We've been in some of straight darkness. Now we stand on our feet. We are the dry bones, Ezekiel 37. And it says later, it's the whole house of Israel. Folks, are y'all putting this together? Are y'all are y'all listening to your more radio? You listen to your teachers right now? We're mm -hmm. putting bone to bone and flesh to flesh as we speak. And the most high I can feel it. I can feel it. He's putting these four winds in y'all right now. Folks is getting revived and refreshed. All right, what is that? Oh, what, what, what scripture is that Baruch? I gotta write this down. Uh second Baruch 45. I've been looking for this scripture. Which one? The darkness. Oh, 46. That's 46, verse 2. Okay. One and two. Okay. 46, verse 2. 1 and 2. 1 through 2. Mm -hmm. Now, folks, hold on. 1 and 2. 42. Okay, say it again. 46, 2. 1 through 2. Uh huh. The way you study and learn, you guys need to make sure that you have a notepad. You need to make sure that you got you a e sword, which is you get it free or pay for a little version because now it's going to give you the letters and, and what the words mean. You need to make sure that when you take these notes or something like this come up, you go in your notepad right away and you write darkness down and then you write these precepts. Or oh, what is sin? First John 3 and 4. You go make a precept. Well, how do you show him love? Well, what's the color of Messiah? Or well, Revelation 1 14. Uh, you know, uh, you know, you go through these precepts, but you got to write them down because you're going to want to expound on things when you're talking to people. Now that you're a nation of kings and priests and you know it, we're supposed to bring light to the world. You need to not just, when you're on this meat, because this is meat when you start really doing this and start really studying, you want to be able to go to it and you want to be able to give them a knife and a fork so they can get some of it too. But you can't do it if you don't have the precepts and you're reaching, you lose people, you'll lose them. So if you're not sure, you do it and always Google it too real quick if you don't know. Because there's a passion that's going to come inside of you. You're going to be passionate about telling people. and It's going to bother you when they don't listen at first. But when you start walking in the spirit, you laugh and you kick the dust off your feet. And you keep it moving because you know something. You know, on judgment day, the Lord is going to tell them something. My child came to you and told you this, but you denied them. But you didn't deny them. You denied me. So since you denied me, depart from me. A lot of people are going to hear depart from me. I want to say that. Where are we at? Second Baruch, chapter 46, verse. Verse four. Go ahead. Actually, verse three. Go ahead. It says, for where again shall we seek the Torah or who will distinguish for us between death and life? Come on. That's what it is. Go ahead. And I said unto them, the throne of El Elohim, I cannot resist. I can't resist it. I got to go. <laughs> Nevertheless, there shall not be wanting to Gesherel. There will not should be what? We shall not be wanting. You shall not be wanting. You're going to get a Holy Spirit. Keep reading. A wise man, nor a son of the Torah, to the seed 
of Yeshua, of your code. Come on now, let's keep going. But only prepare ye your hearts that ye may obey the Torah. Well, prepare what? Prepare your hearts. Your hearts that and your mind are interchangeable. Obey you gotta, the Torah. You gotta obey this Torah. Go ahead, read. And be subject to those who in fear are wise and understanding. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Then it says those who are wise of understanding. You need to be subject to them. What does that mean, Sister McGuire? That means you need to listen hearken. to them. You got to hearken. <laughs> they, they, I have certain people that I'm going to give you to bring you life. Folks, we've been drunk and dead and sleep. Now that the Lord has put a spirit in me so heavy, so holy, so fulfilling, my job now is to disperse this amongst our people, our brethren, and the handmaids and servants. So that now we can come out of that deep sleep. We can come out of that darkness. Yes. Now we can go and have oil in our lamp so the light can be there. So when Yeshua comes back, he'll take his brides with him. Come on. That's mm. what it's all about. Yes. That's the whole sum of it. Yes. Let's keep reading, please. I'm still on verse 5. I'm Second Baruch chapter 46. I'm in the bottom part of verse 5. Yes, ma'am. It says, and prepare your souls. Prepare what? Your soul. Not your body. Not your flesh. This is what y'all got to understand. Everybody's out here worried about what they eat. If you're so concerned about your belly, you'll never have anything in the spirit. You need to concern, you need to, you need to be preparing your soul. How do you prepare your soul? You got to feed it with spiritual things. Yes. What is spiritual thing? This word. Yes. Prepare your soul. Keep reading, please. That ye may not depart from them. That you may not depart from what? The Torah. Come on. And the and the men of understanding. <laughs> and then you won't be saying, oh, forget him. He don't know nothing. Uh, then when you depart from the man of understanding, you know what? You end up going back to your vomit. You end up being a dog chasing his tail. You end up being on sandy ground. You end up having no side blow those four winds and you all over the place. Next thing you know, you're on the top of a bush and a branch. You become the leaf instead of the tree. Mm. Let's go, please. Verse six. For if ye do these things, good news shall come unto you. Come on. Which I before told you of. Come on. Nor shall ye fall into the torment yes. of which I testified to you before. Come on. But with regard to the word that I was to be taken, I did not make it known to them or to my son. He kept that to himself. One thing I, mm -hmm. I want to point out mm -hmm. here, though, because right now, even before people are dying, mm -hmm. right now, these people have tormented souls yeah, while man. they are alive. Well, that was foretold to Enoch. Enoch was foretold that just like the Lord said, he told the giants that he's going to put in their dreams and visions of, the, of how he's going to destroy them. He says, in the latter days, all sinners, I'm going to put in their dreams and visions of the day what I'm going to do on judgment day to them. You see, these people and all the souls right now are going to cubby holes to wait after death. One is horrible. That's what those who in get out, like get out, they keep sinking deeper and deeper. And they just feel like they're screaming. They can't get out of it. But then they're going to have to come out of there to be judged. Then there's those who go to the beautiful place who love the Lord, love the Messiah. They got springs and gardens. And the other one is not so beautiful, but they never denied it. They never jumped on board. Their souls go there to wait. And then on judgment day, Yeshua is going to bring them all out of these cubby holes. He calls them storehouses. They're going to come out where everybody can be judged. We're in the first resurrection, the whole house of Israel. And also all of our relatives who've been hung, killed, all the ones who've been poisoned, all the ones who've been put in pots and cauldrons, all the ones, you understand, when they, they got our bones under these streets and cities. He's going to raise all of our people first. He calls them his innumerable army. And then once he does that to us, he's going to give us a heart of flesh, not of stone. Then he's going to give us his spirit. When he does that, we are in the first resurrection. That's why he said those who are blessed who are in the first resurrection. Why? Because you have no part of the second one. Because he's going to make you immortal. He's going to make you where you can't sin again. And this is going to be a beautiful time, folks. So we need to understand Israel. We're going to be in the first resurrection. The reason he's bringing us up first, because we got to be a light to the rest of the world. He can't, he can't fix them if we ain't fixed. We are the branch. We are the tree. It shows the tree. We're the branches on that tree. But these other people are grafted in only because of their ways that they're good people. And see, this is why you don't judge a book by the cover. You got to open that book up and look at it. Not all people because of a certain color are bad mm -hmm. people. And I'm going to say this to you again. One of my good friends who I'm very close to is a YT guy. And I'm going to say that because when my children passed away, 
Who gave me money to go down and take on my baby? A lot of them uh, white people. All of them, they did. <laughs> they cleaved to me and did it. They, they understand there's a spirit there too. And they tell me they know it. But they helped me out. But they got good spirits. The Lord said those who took you to captivity must go into captivity. Those who kill with a sword must die with a sword. So those people will be those who, and in my opinion, and when I pray to the Most High about them, they will be handmaids and servants in the kingdom. All praises. But I know the majority, as the book of Obadiah said, are going to be gone because they will not take their yoke off of our necks. They will not give us back what they took. They will not repent of their sins. And so, therefore, 98% are going to be gone. You know, I already know the number. He's already told me. Man. That's why leprosy means your skin turns what? White. White. White That's is a sign of what? Curse uncleanness. It's on a sign of uncleanness. I'm going to just leave that right there. That's right. why you see a spirit prevailing with certain people who have perpetual leprosy. Mm -hmm. And I'll just leave it right there. Where are we at, Sister Micaiah? Um, Prepare your hearts. For, we're in 2nd verse 46, 46 um, verse 6. Chapter 47. You're okay, you're on 47. That should be beauty. It says, and when I had gone forth, and he dismissed, it says, and when I had gone forth and dismissed them, and I went thence, and I said unto them, Behold, I go to Chevron, for thither El Elohim has sent me. And I came to that place where the word had been spoken unto me, and I sat there and fasted again seven days. The seven day fast is something here. And it came to pass after the seventh day that I prayed before El Elohim, and I said, O Yahuwah, you summon the advent of times. And they stand before you, and you cause the power of the ages to pass away, and they do not resist you. You arrange the method of the seasons, and they obey you, and you alone know the duration of the generations, and you reveal not your mysteries to many. And you make known the multitude of the fire, and you weigh the lightness of the wind. You explore the limit of the heights, and you scrutinize the depths of the darkness. You care for the number of them which pass away, that they may be preserved. And you prepare an abode for those that are to be. I mean, that's that cubby holes I was telling you about. Got it? Verse 7. You remember the beginning which you have made and the destruction that is to be you forgot not. You remember the beginning of verse 8. With nods and of fear and indignation, you command the flames. And you change the rowak. And you change it. In, they change. In, and they change into different spirits or rowaks. And with the word, you quicken that which was not. And with mighty power, you hold that which has not yet come. You know, that's and deep. you think about wow, that. When you look at some of these wildfires that's, that's burning, yeah. these fire natos, sometimes it looks like their spirits running through those woods. Well, not only that, he says he changes the spirit of the flames. Mm -hmm. So this is why you'll see that the cars will be melted to 2,000 some degrees tires in the floor. Are completely melted on the ground. You'll see all the houses burnt, but you'll see the trees still standing. Why? Because the trees have not offended the Most High. They got a spirit too. They haven't offended the Most High. Now they found out the trees can communicate with each other. They have a language. They communicate and they do all sorts of things. Some trees I've seen people pray in a tree bow. Folks, I want you to understand that everything that the Lord does, not by force, not by might, he's doing it with the spirit. He can change ice into fire, fire to ice. And this is pretty deep. I love this. Where am I at here? It says here, it says with the nods, you, it says verse 8, this is 2nd book 48 and 8. With nods of fear and indignation, you command flames and they change into a different rowaks. And with a word, you quicken that which was not. And with mighty power, you hold that which has not yet come. You instruct, you instruct created things in the understanding of you. And you make wise the fears so as to minister in their orders. These are the planets, the stars, and all of that. He makes sure that they do what they're supposed to, and they do it in their orders. They don't transgress him. Armies innumerable stand before you and minister in their order, quietly at your nod. Hear your servant and give ear to my petition. And this is what I say to the Lord. I always say, Lord, I'll come to you. I want you to hear my petition. That's one of the things I do say. For in a little time, we are born, and in a little time, we do return. But with you, ours are as time, excuse me, Shalaki. With you, ours are as a time and a day as generations. Wow. But not, it said, but not therefore worth, not, the, it says, but not therefore wroth with man, for he is nothing. 
and take no account of our works. For what are we? For lo, by your gift do we come into this world, and we depart not of our own will. So we have no control. We leave this place. And Baruch is saying this. For we, for we said not to our parents, beget us, nor did we send saying to Sheol and say, receive us. What therefore is our strength that we should bear your wrath? Or what are we that we should endure your judgment? Well, Protect them. Sure. I'm in um, 2 Baruch 48, verse 18. Uh-huh. 2 Baruch chapter 48, verse 18. Protect us in your compassion and in your mercy help us. Behold the little ones that are subject unto you and save all that draw near unto you and destroy not the hope of our people and cut not short the times of our aid. For this is the nation which you have chosen, and these are the people whom you find no equal. But I will speak now before you, and I will say, as my heart thinks, in you do we trust, for lo, your Torah is with us, and we know that we shall not fall so as long as we guard your statues. To all times are we blessed, and at all events in this that we have no we have not mingled with the other nations. He keeps going over this over and over again. Folks, when we mingle with these other nations, what happens? We fall away from him. We start picking. Look at all these bad habits we got we mix with these nations. Yeah. It wasn't by us. You know, we know we was in slavery. But look at all the stuff they taught us. I'm embarrassed at the person I used to be. I don't know about you guys. But I'm embarrassed. It says, to all times we are blessed in all events. And that this is what we have no, not mingled with the other nations. For we are all one celebrated people who have received one Torah from El. And the Torah which is among us will aid us in the surpassing wisdom which is in us will help, will help us. us. Mm. Get this. He says, get this, he says. And the Torah which is amongst us and will aid us in surpassing wisdom which is in us will help us. Why does he say in us, Sister Micaiah? Because well, my he had to sign that, what did he do? This what? word in us. When we in looked that up in DNA. Hebrew, when we looked it up in Hebrew, what does that mean, Sister Mikaya? He did what? He Imp implanted, implanted it. it. That's why he's saying here, and to the Torah which is amongst us, it will aid us. That's that written law. But we go back to it, we don't do it in the spirit. We got to go back to it as a blueprint. It said it will aid us in the surpassing wisdom which is in us, and it will help us. Wow. That's why we hear this words to confirmation what you already know. And when I had prayed and said these things, I was greatly weakened. And he answered and said unto me, you have prayed simply, O Baruch, and all your words have been heard. But my judgment, but my judgment exacts its own, and my Torah exacts its rights. For from your words, I will answer you, and from your prayer, I will speak to you. I'm really going to answer you. For well, this is as follows. He that is corrupted is not at all. Wow. Do y'all hear that? Oh, would y'all hear that? This is from the most high. He who is corrupted, he that is corrupted is not at all. What does that mean? You don't even exist to the most high. You're the walking dead. You, you, you're ash already. You don't even exist to the most high. He has both wrought iniquity, so as far as he could do as far as he could do nothing. Shalaki, let me slow down. He has brought he has wrought iniquity so far as he could do not do anything. And has not remembered my goodness, nor accepted my long suffering. Therefore, you shall surely be taken up, as I before told you. For that time shall arise which brings affliction. For it shall come and pass by with quick vehemence, and it shall be a turbulent coming in the heat of indignation. So he's going to burn this place up. This is what the Lord is telling us. And it shall and it shall come to pass in those days that all the inhabitants of the earth shall be moved one against another. Because they know not that my judgments, what? Has drawn not. This is why everybody's going against each other right now. The Lord said when these things happen, they're not going to know why. Because they're not going to understand that judgment is coming. And this is what's happening right now. And this is why that sign is coming over us April the 8th. Okay? This is pretty deep. It says, 33, for there shall not be many found. It says, for there shall not be found many wise at that time. And intelligence shall be what? But, but a few. few. And I was just talking about this. All these people with these degrees, they have no wisdom. Moreover, even those who know shall most of all be what? 
silence. silence. Because when you have true wisdom, you know sometimes you can open doors that you don't want to open. You know you can say certain things that can bring other things in. So a lot of, and then you notice people you can talk to and you look at them, you say certain words, you give them a C and they look blank. Like they don't hear nothing, understand nothing you're saying. So you know instead of giving your wisdom, you'll be what? Silent. Sometimes the, the best word is what? The unspoken word. Yes. It says, an honor shall be, be turned into shame and strength humiliated, humiliated into contempt and prob probity, probity destroyed. The definition. And now remember, yeah. we broke that down. What does that mean? Honesty, sincerity, okay. conform conformity to facts or habitual truthfulness. Ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He says, honor shall be turned into shame, strength shall be humiliated into contempt and Probity, 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 probity. Now, what does probity mean? This is what's happening right now. Honesty, honesty is gone. Sincerity, there's no sincerity. Conformity to facts, conformity to facts, and hab habitual truthfulness. And habitual truthfulness. This stuff will not be here. Remember, there's no true science. You supposed to do six experiments, theory, hypotheses, and then you do six experiments, and then you got what? A fact. Everything today is based off hypotheses and the theory, but there are no facts. And this is what they teach us in these schools. That's called indoctrination. What verse was that? 35. Okay. We're in second book, um, chapter 48, verse 35. I'm on 36 now. And many shall say to many at that time, where has the multitude of intelligence hidden itself? Y'all see what's going on in America? Do you see that we got every nation around us coming against us? Because we picked a battle with everybody. And you would wonder, that's why the book of Obadiah says he's going to take the wise man out of what? Eat him. Mm -hmm. Where is intelligence hidden itself? Huh? Look at our people. Not just them. Not eat them. Look at us. Look at our women walking around half naked and our men walking around their pants down. Look at our men not even running their houses. They're running to other women's houses instead of handling their own. Look at our women looking at other men of other places and stuff, not understanding the Lord is judging by what they think. If you think it, the Lord say you've already done it. And now you got spirits in your house. You wonder why your husband mad at you and you mad at him because you've been in the streets doing something you had no business, but your spirit is bearing witness to each other. And now there's anger in the house because there's a spirit there. We've been taught all the wrong things. Everything is upside down. Second Brook 48, 36. And 30, many, I'm going to read it again. Oh, okay. I want to read it again. Second Brook 48, 36. And many shall say to many at that time, where's the multitude of intelligence hidden itself? And whether has the multitude of wisdom removed itself? And while they are meditating on these things, then envy shall arise in those who had not thought out to themselves, and passion shall seize him that is peaceful. And many shall be stirred up in anger to injure many. And they shall rouse up armies in order to shed blood. And, in, and at the end, they shall perish together with them. This is the Feast of the Birds. This is what he's talking about right now. This is the Battle of Armageddon. This is what's going to happen right now. 38. Mm -hmm. It shall come to pass that at that selfsame time that a change of time shall manifest and appear to every man because in all those times they polluted themselves and they practiced oppression and walk every man in his own works and remember not the Torah of Elohim. We keep going back to that Torah, the first five books of the Bible. Oh, no. We keep going back to it. 39. Therefore, a fire shall consume their thoughts, and a flame shall, shall the meditations of their minds be tried. For the judge shall come and will not tarry, because each of the inhabitants of the earth knew when he was transgressing. But my Torah they knew not by reason of what? Their pride. By their pride. Mm. They know they're transgressing. The laws are written in them. They know when they're doing wrong, but they've been listening to these men saying that the Torah is cast away. The laws don't matter. The laws are done away. Because of that pride, when they become puffed up, they finna fall. Pride comes before what? Great fall. I'm going to read that again. Okay. Because each of the inhabitants of the earth knew when he was transgressing. But my Torah they knew not by reason of their pride. But many shall then assuredly weep, yea, over the living, more than they weep over the dead. Come on now. <laughs> he Whoa. said that many going to weep more over the living than they weep over the dead. Mm. How many of y'all weeping over your children? Talking about your mother and your father ain't right. Talking about your friends who ain't right. Talking about other people. You more worried about the dead 
the living. The living, excuse me, the living, then you even concerned about the dead. The Lord said, you're going to weep over the living way more than you weep over the dead. This is where we're at right now as we speak. Wow. 42. This is 2 Baruch chapter 48, verse 42. Now answered and said, oh, Adam. This is what he calls son of man. Oh, Adam, what have you done? Now, this is when he's talking to Adam. This is deep. This is pretty deep. I love this. And he answered and said, oh, Adam, what have you done to all those who are born from you? And what will be said of the first Cha or Eve who hearkened to the serpent? For the multitude are gone into corruption, nor is there any number of those whom the fire devours. He said, ain't no number of the ones that the fire going to burn. It's a lot of people going to burn that fire. He said, there ain't no number. That's how many is going to burn. So many don't believe. They don't believe real, in this, man. This thing is real, man. It's not going to change the fact. No, not believing <laughs> is speeding up your road to that Come path on. of fire. That's what it's going to do. But again, I will speak in your presence. Oh, Yahuwah, my Adonai. Know what is, it says, know what is in your creature. For you did of old command the dust to produce Adam. And you know the number of those who were born from him and how far they have sinned before you and who have exercised, excuse me, who have existed and not confess you as their creator. This is deep. There's a lot of people don't confess him. They don't believe in the Lord. They don't believe in that or not. This ain't no God. These are what you call atheists today. This is what he's talking about. Let's get this. It says here, verse 47, as regards to all these and their end, their end shall convict them, and your Torah, which they have transgressed, shall acquit them on your day of judgment. But now let us dismiss this wicked and inquire about the righteous. Now I will recount their blessedness and not be silent in celebrating their glory, which you have reserved for them. For surely, as in a little time, and as transitioner, trans, in transitory, this. in this time transitory world, which you live, you have endured much labor, so in the so that the world which there is no end, you shall receive a great light. Man, I love this, man. The Lord says, surely in a little time, in the transitionary world, which we're in right now, you have endured much labor. So in the world which there is no end, you shall receive what? A bridal light. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. What you got? That's about Go 10. Okay, where we at here? All praises. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, all praises. So we're going to go ahead. All right, folks, we're going to stop right here. And uh, what I'm going to do is make a note. Um, okay, I'll do that later. We're stopping at chapter 48, second Baruch. Now, this is going to get meatier and meatier and meatier. And Baruch is explaining a whole lot of things, having a conversation with the Most High. The beautiful thing about this, these are questions that we have every day. We just didn't know how to get them answered. But now we read second Baruch. He's asking these same questions that we ask. So the Lord is talking about the time that we live in right now. That's what Baruch is talking about. So these books are coming to life. These books are history. These books are what I would call the meat that goes on the bones of the Old Testament. See, the Old Testament, the Bible, what it is, is just bones. But all these other books, they put the flesh on these bones. Now, once this flesh gets on these bones, now the four winds come in, which is the Holy Spirit, and gets these bones to get up and walk. And that's us. We are a living book. This book is inside of us. We are living testimony to the Lord's prophecy. Now that we're reading it, we see everything playing out exactly as he said. Mm -hmm. All praise to the Most High. Exactly. And Another gonna... thing <clears throat> mm -hmm. I want y'all to take from this. Yes. Do y'all see how he conversates with the Most High? He, Come on. Look, look at how he's Come playing. On. Look at how yes. when you're reading this word, take notes on how these prophets are talking yes. to the Most High in yes. prayer. Yes. And one thing he 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 always does <clears throat> is that he answers you when you come to him humbly. The Lord will the Lord says, I speak of once, yet I speak of twice, but yet man does not perceive. We'll ask the Lord, Father, please help me. Can you give me an answer? Should I be with this person? Or uh, should I be going on this job? Or uh, or should I should I be eating this food? And the Lord will speak to you and tell you, no, you need to do this. Or yes, this is a good person. He'll speak to you and tell you they're a good person or bad. But what we do is we omit our hearts. And what we do is we cast him away and we follow our hearts. No, he's no good. Several times he's taken you down a dark road. Several times he's hurt you. Several times that female, your friend, she's taken from you. Now, I told you I don't want you to be a footman. I told you to forgive, but I told you do not forget. So 
don't go back to your vomit. So we'll hear his voice. But what do we do? Oh, I like them. I, I mean, that's my boy. That's my girl. And what do we do? We go back. And when we go back, what happens? We deal with the consequences mm -hmm. because he's spoken once. He's spoken twice. But you omitted his word and you followed your own. Curse is the man or woman who follows their own heart. We got to follow the most high. It's beautiful what he's doing with us right now. It's beautiful the spirit he's putting on us. Beautiful the light that he's shining on, on his children right now. Now we walk out in the streets, we got our heads up. They told us that we were from ham and that we were cursed. So as this shirt say here, we don't go ham, mm. we go shim. And I got the fire shim in me. Mm. Oh, praise the most high. Mm. It's our answer to talk, I got the fire shim in me. I dare a man to come my way. You come my way, I'll cast you out. You cast him away from us. Not by force, not by might, but I'll use the spirit of shim in me. And this is how we cast away all those devils who try to come on us, who try to do things to us, even the spirits around us. You call on that gift. We make up a body, all of us. You guys, some of you guys got laying of hands. Some of you guys can prophesy. Some of you guys you understand can teach. All of us got different gifts when we make up the body. You know, one thing a sister said to me, though, which really makes sense. Mm -hmm. Any of us can have any of the gifts at any given time, right. depending on the will of the, the most, most high. high. That's it. What he wants done. He pours it out according to your spirit, as Naphtali said. Oh, praise. That's a great point she made. Mm -hmm. And everybody of the Lord's children, the Holy Spirit works with. But the Lord has ordered if you're married, he speaks to the man, the man through the woman. There's an order in the married house. That's why he said he's the bridegroom coming back for the bride. He has an order saying that if you don't have a husband, you're sure is your husband. Saying that if you don't say you have a family, remember, you sure was asked that question. Your mother's outside, your brother's outside. He said, wait a minute, who's my mother, who's my brother? He said, all those who follow my father, that's my mother, that's my brother. And that's how I feel. All of us here who follow our mother and our father, who, excuse me, who follow our father in heaven, all of us who follow our Father in heaven, y'all my spiritual brothers and sisters. But it's deeper than that with Israel. We're actually bloodline. Mm -hmm. We're of the blood. We're of the seed. We come from the sperm. We come yes. from the seed, which is race, progenitor, nation. Without a family, you do not have a building block of a nation. Yes, we are the center of this. The world. Lord has brought me and my wife here to show husband and wives how they need to be, how they need to be reading together. Um, the Lord say a family that prays together stays, stays together. together. He's showing how we should be studying together, how we should be reading together, and how we should be interacting with each other amongst the Feeding studies. Feeding each other's spirit. So we can feed each other's spirit. Then he's showing that when you have a man and a wife and they walk righteously, you understand now you got families. Now I got a nation I'm building. He's building our nation back, folks. The first thing he had to do was clean the inside of the cup. And that's what he's doing with these scriptures right now. This word is bringing all things back into what? Remembrance. Remembrance. You know, and, and this mm. should have been an uplifting yes. uh, verses for y'all. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's so many of us I know are going through our battles. But if you ain't going through hell, you you not going to make it. Listen, the more you go through here, the brighter your light going to be Come through on. there. I'm going to say this one more time. Bring it out. Why do you think he calls orphans? He says he has favor with orphans, widows, homeless, fatherless, and motherless because they're afflicted more. But he said, I'm going to make the first last and what? The last, last first. first. They're going to be first in the kingdom. Do y'all understand why you're going through perpetual hell now? If you don't go through the fire, the Lord said, you a bastard. Now, if he's getting ready to come back and get us, and he said in the last, he put our temptation on earth. He said, I'm not you, but I'm going to put it on earth. I'm going to put temptation. So I can weed out the rebels. But with my children, I'll keep them from the hour of temptation. What makes you a child? By following his laws. By showing him love. First John 5 and 3. Mm -hmm. You show him love. That's what makes you a child of the light. You show him love by reading these books and study to show yourself to be approved. You know, that kind of reminds me of the one lesson we did on yeah. assisting. Yes, you know? yes, deep when you lesson. think about something That's being deep. assisted, Sifting, yeah. it's getting tossed all kind of ways. He's but taking a week. From the chair. Yeah, but what did he say? He will not let one, one grain fall. Wait, that's deep. Wait not one. Say that one more time, Sister McCain. He said he will not let one grain fall. Stop giving up on yourself. Stop sitting there thinking that he ain't speaking to you. He speaks to you, but you just can't perceive it. Why? Because you keep putting your heart first. And that blurs out the message. 
When he's coming to you spiritually, you keep thinking carnal. Get rid of the carnal. He's spiritual. If you get rid of the carnal mindset, you'll hear his voice. Yes. As long as you're thinking carnal thoughts, which means you're thinking, oh, I don't know if the Lord going to hear me. I don't know if this is As long as you have doubt. That's right. You have a double mind. As long as you say something to him, but you don't mean it, you got a double tongue. What creature has a double tongue on this earth? A snake. Mm. Spiritual battles can't be won physically. That's why he say liars cannot get into the kingdom. So if you come to him and you're saying one thing, but you don't believe it, you're lying to him. Uh, my goodness. I don't know if they're hearing me right now. I don't know if they're feeling me right now. Oh, they feeling you. I, I, I don't even hearing. know if they're hearing me or feeling me right comments. now. Oh, yeah, they're feeling you. And Many are you. called, but few are chosen. Why are they not chosen? Hmm. Because they go to the Lord with the devil. Did he not say you have one father and that's in heaven? So when you come to your dad and you come to your daddy on earth and you lie to him, and he's looking at you. He know you lying. He listen to you talk. He keep listening to you talk. But he's looking at you. You're lying to me. Mm hmm what happens with your daddy when you lie to your dad on earth? They straighten you right away. And another thing they do, they don't adhere to what you just said because now you don't deserve it. So what do you think our father in heaven, how does he know? You know, when you give him something and you ask him to help you out, but then every time you turn around, you got your fingers trying to pry it out of his hand. Remember, his time is not our time. You say, well, I came to the Lord and I asked him. Well, you ask him. Well, do you sure you didn't ask him, miss? You ask him for a nice house. You ask him for a nice car. You ask him, you understand, to give you help you with your bills. You ask him this stuff, but you never ask the Lord, you understand, to give you wisdom. Mm. Somebody toes got stepped on. I want y'all to understand some Solomon. He's an example. David came through his bloodline. The Messiah came through that bloodline. Excuse me. Solomon came through David's bloodline. And after that, we know the Messiah came through that bloodline. Hmm? But what does Solomon ask for? Solomon said, Father, he, now when did he come to him in a dream and a vision? Job 33. That's how he comes to you. He came to Solomon in a dream and a vision. When he said, Sol Solomon, what do you want? What do you like? Solomon said, Father, I'm, the, I'm a, but a youth and young. He said, you gave me many people to be over. He said, I don't know how to govern these people. He said, if you could do anything, Abba, I'd pray for wisdom. You see, wisdom trumps all things. Because once you got wisdom, plenty will come. Peace will come. Love will come. The kingdom will come. Solutions to your problems will, will come. come. But if you have knowledge of this world, you have foolishness. And you don't know the most high. You don't know his Torah. And therefore, you're going to be dealing with problems of this world. But when you deal with problems of this world and you deal with spiritual things and go to the most high, you get on your knees and you pray, you ask him to intervene. Now you got spiritual things getting ready to happen because he's here now with us. Now he's waking us up and now he's giving us our powers back. And when we pray together, we move nations. I want y'all to get that. When we pray together, Israel. We move nations. Right now, all of us should be praying that Yeshua finds us worthy when he comes back. That's right. All of us should be praying that we're found worthy to be making it on Zion. All of us should be praying that we're not turned over. Where we're thinking that we're doing good, but it's actually bad. And we're doing bad, and it's actually good. We're reprobates. We need to pray that we're not turned over, as Romans one twenty four says he does, to all of those who don't follow his law and who change the truth into, into a, a lie. lie. That's on many levels. It's not just talking about the rainbow people. It's talking about iniquity. And it breaks down the personalities. I just want to give you that. Folks, we're here to learn. We're here to grow. I don't get on TikTok and get on these channels where they're debating and all of that. See, all of that is none of that scripture. The Lord says, let your yay be yay, your nay be nay. He says, when you speak, you don't do debating. You don't go back and forth. We have people that get on these channels and they'll sit there and start taking arguments and going back and forth with each other where well, there's no edification that can be given. See, the Lord is a peace. That's why his son is the Lord of the what? Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And if he's the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is upon us, should we not have peace? Yes. Let's say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, heaven bless be you, Adonai Yahuwah. Father, thank you so much for coming.
coming into our lives, Father. Thank you, Father, for taking that veil off our face. Thank you, yes. Heavenly Father, for Thank pulling us out of that Father. darkness. Thank you, Father, for returning these laws back to your children so that we, Father, can light our candles, Father, so that we can have oil on our lamps and so that Yeshua can see us when he comes back, Abba. Thank you for the anointing, Father, that you put on us today. Thank you for the Holy Spirit yes. that's on us now, Father, that's restoring us back to the kings and priests, to those children that reverence your holy name. For you are the holiest of holies, Father. Bless you, and blessed be your son, Yeshua. Yeshua, thank you so much. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your long suffering. Thank you for your patience with us. For I know so long with the things we've been taught that we grieve you. But thank you so much for not letting us go. Thank you for returning to your sheep. Thank you for putting us on your shoulders. Thank you for showing us to everybody so that we know and they know that we are yours. Thank you for letting us hear your voice. I pray, Heavenly Father, as we go through our days, that you bless all those here, Father, who seek you with an open eyes and open ears and an earnest heart. I pray that you protect them, Father. I pray that you protect their homes. I pray that you protect the women here, their wombs, and I protect their children, Heavenly Father. I pray that these children who are lost, Father, you bring them back into the fold. I pray that the elderly who've been lost, Father, that you wake them up. And I pray that you give them new ears and new eyes, Father. I pray for the young, Father, who are lost, that you give them wisdom of an old person, Father. I pray that you give them the eyesight of a prophet. I pray that you give them the ears you understand of a seer. But, Father, you are the holies of holies. And you said that you will return the former rains on us and they'll be more abundant. I pray that you pour your spirit on us, Father, unceasingly, without wavering, Father. I pray that you continue to pour it out on us, Father, so that we can grow each and every day and we can reverence your holy name and be a brand, Father, that you don't mind being plucked out of a fire. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we represent you. And I pray, Heavenly Father, for all those who have repented of their sins here, Father, that you forgive them of their sins, Father. For a lot of them just don't know any better, but I pray that you put an anointing on them. I pray that you put a spirit on them to convict them, Father, to always repent of their sins. Whenever they do wrong, know that you're there to hold their transgression, that you're refining them like fire. And I pray, Father, that they always go back to that word, which is that water, to wash out these impurities. Blessed be you, bless the kingdom. And I pray that you bless all, Father, that we touch and do. In the name of your son, Yeshua, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 All praises. The Lord is with us right now. He's waking us up. It's a beautiful time to be in. We know that the ends are coming. We can feel it. Everybody can see the wars are coming. Israel, it's not time for you to be afraid. It's time for you to rejoice. It's not time for you to sit and be scared. It's time for you to use wisdom now. Mm -hmm. We told you the banking system was ready to close. You need to get some crypto. You got to go to digital dollar. Get you some gold and silver get you, coins. Get you some too. gold and so silver you have coins. Some tangible things. Some what, Sister Micaiah? Some tangible things. Because yeah. already some states have mm -hmm. actually made that legal tender again. That's right. That's right. Make sure you also build a good community line with your brothers and sisters. Because in the end, we're going in the wilderness and we got to help each other out. Don't worry about those people who are not right. Don't worry about those who don't listen. We just read in Second Baruch, you don't remember these people. He said that they won't even be a members in this world. They're already the walking dead. They're chaff. So don't spend your energy on trying to save a soul when you're not in control. And don't let them drain your energy. And don't let them take your what? Your crown. Come on. Don't let them take your crown. Say it. If you're a nation of kings and priests, why would you let anybody take your crown? And my brother who's at the post office, that's something I'm going to tell you right now. When that lady who's Spanish is trying to beat you down because you're one of your friends and you know who you are, whatever you do, remember, you got a bright crown on your forehead. Do not ever let nobody take it. You know when people come at me like that, it make me smile more. It make me my pump a bit more. Because now I know I'm on the right path. Now I mm -hmm. know that I'm one of the Lord's children. All praise to the Most High. All right. This is a Thursday. Um, so I got to get up early in the morning. And uh, I want to thank you guys for joining us tonight. It's been a beautiful time again. And let's see who we uh, we normally have a couple, couple questions. Um, and so we don't know. Let's see here. All right. So we're good. But anyway, we want to thank you guys. We'll see you again on the Sabbath if it's the Lord's will. And the Most High um, is going to bring us together on the Sabbath. 
I'm not quite sure what we're reading on the Sabbath. We'll come, I'll, I'll figure it out later. Um, but the Lord brings these lessons together. And what they do is they bring a lot of light to the people. All praise to the most high. All right, where we at right here? Um, oh, we got a couple of prayer Feaster, requests. Foster. Corey said, hold, pray for him. Okay, hold on. Let me read. Christopher Foster, I'm right with you. All praises, Chris. I'm glad you ride with me. Darling, with me. Amen. Corey, what's up, cuz? How you doing? That's my little cousin. I love him so much. He's like a little big ball mm -hmm. of fire. Please pray. add me and my wife and I to your prayer list. Mm -hmm. I will do just that, Corey. Absolutely. I'll pray for you, cuz. I pray for you anyway every night, whether you know it or not. You're my family. I always pray for my cousins and my aunts and uncles. Mm -hmm. Always. Every night. Every day I pray for you. Um, Christopher Foster. Thank you. You're welcome, Christopher. Mm -hmm. um, good night. You all praise us. Let's see what we Kathleen Reed. So, so, you know, we boy, that's a soldier right there. All praises, <laughs> Yahya Shalom, Bracey, um, Talyanka. Am I saying this right? Where Talyanka? I don't want to say it wrong. So. Okay, Talyanka, hallelujah, all praises, rich, rich, thick, and creamy. Man, you got to talk about that name. <laughs> I love you, baby, but you, 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 you got it, <laughs> baby. You got to change that name. You got to change that name, sweetheart. It don't go with the channel, it don't go with where the Lord's restoring you either. And I love you. We're going to talk about that. Inbox me, please, Rich Thick and Creamy, because uh, we got to talk about that. The Lord is restoring us, and certain names bring on conjugation. So I just wanted to say that, and we'll talk about that. Um, never, y'all, because I know you love the Lord, and I know you're passionate I about know the Word. She, be on the, she loves on the, the Lord. When I say this child, love morning. the Lord, you love the Lord, but we got to do something with that. Because, yeah. Um, let's see what we got. Um, Jessica Reeves, how you doing, Jessica? Woo, felt that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Hell, praise the most high. Tanya Lang, hallelujah. All praise you, Hua. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, her, going to listen again later. Thank you. You're welcome. So, folks, we can all get these lessons here, and you can always go back. Now, anybody who's doing the, the Passover, if you guys can help us at all, we're telling you guys, please help donate for the food. Um, we got the building. Um, the other donation we use, we got chafing dishes and stuff. But we still got a lot of food to get. So if you guys can help us donate it all, you can dollar sign as dollar sign um, Y A H S Mana M A N A, and that's the cash app dollar sign Y A H S M A N A. If you guys can do anything, ten cent, fifty cents, anything for Passover, and we also got the baptism where we need little food too. So we appreciate it, and I want to thank you guys because your alms that you've been giving have fed 175 of the homeless. You've also helped us prepare that we can go ahead and get a, a Passover done. And you've also helped us, you understand, lift our spirits up. It's been so many it's supplies beautiful. too for the homeless. Do we've had too. people send supplies for the homeless, which is beautiful. Brother, the other day, um, sent some lamb out. You understand? He sent lamb in the mail. And I mean, in these shirts, I told you, Brother Asher, <laughs> yeah. they're the ones who gave us these shirts. So if you guys want to get these shirts, uh, we're going to give you their information so you guys can have them to make you some shirts. Um, and, of course, they're like us. They're poor, so they can't give them to you free. So let me give that to you straight. <laughs> you know, and none of us, all of us are struggling out here. We're Israel. We have to support each other. You know, other. the Lord said I didn't come for the rich of this world, but the poor of this world. Yeah. So we're not rich. We all, you know, consider, this is it. Well, we were at one point the richest people on earth. We're super poor, all of us. But guess what? We're rich because we got the promise. We got the kingdom to come. That's beautiful. So if anybody, you guys can help us out in any way. And if you guys can put these information online for people to help out with the Passover and for uh, defeat, um, also for the baptism, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And I thank you guys so much. And we'll put it in the lesson here we'll also go ahead and put it now listen tiktok is is doing well they're not doing any crazy stuff but you some reason youtube is buffering and doing some crazy things so i went to a brother told me to go to odyssey.com and i went there and i signed up but i got to finish it but sabat i should be on odyssey.com so it's spelled uh let me see here i'm going to go over that but one thing i will say is i don't know if you got to pay for that site but i want to say something folks all these sites that are free, it seems like they, they're, they're hijacking them. And you can't, you, you, you can't get the lesson out. They keep buffering it or freezing it. 
So uh, if you guys know any site where we can go on live, where they're not buffering and it's free, let me know where, where the people coming in don't have to pay for it. That's what we want to know. Yeah, and eventually you know, we will have a streaming website, but all everything's a process. It's a process. We like we say we're not rich. We you know we don't have that, so we're 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 working with what we have. So I know what's called Odyssey. God willing, that is. There you go. All praise. Everything is His will. It's Odyssey dot com. Let me look at this here. Uh, Passover Bible Study Arm Arm Odyssey O D Y S S E Y dot com. Somebody put that in there for me, please, moderators. Can you type that in? Okay, I got it. Let me type it in here. This is the site we're going to be on on the What's Sabbath. On, uh, YouTube, type in it. I'm going to type it on YouTube. I'm going to type it on here. O-D-Y. It's O-D-Y-S-E-E dot com. And you can go there and make sure. Hold on. O-D-Y-S-E-E dot com. You can go there and sign up because what I'm going to do is have the lessons there where they won't be buffering, they won't be bothering us, you know? And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go there and um, because we got to do something where these people don't want us to get the truth. And I hate when they freeze my lessons. Now, I got a camera and it's 4K. It's beautiful. Well, I can record the lessons and re-upload them. But the thing with that is time consuming. We're so busy. And two, it only does two hours and a half recorded. And we typically sometimes do four hours or four hours when we do a lesson. Because we bring the forward in the lab to give understanding. So if you guys know any sites or you can recommend any, let us know, please. The where mm-hmm. people don't have to pay to get on. See, everything we do, we try to do it free for the people. We don't like being, we don't want to be associated with churches, 501c3, all of that stuff. We don't want to be associated with that. So we're trying to do things, but I do believe that we may have to go to a site where you do have to pay because I don't know any other way around it. If you guys know, please tell me. This is what family does. We work with each other and we help each other. You know, we're about saving souls. You understand? That's what we're about. <clears throat> we're here to save souls. <clears throat> Can I get that water, please? Uh-huh. There you go. Oh, praise the most high. And so the Lord has put a spirit on we us. We got here. quite a bit of prayer requests, too. So Awesome. We just got to write. Where are they at? They're here. They're there. Okay. So if you guys want prayer requests, and I'm telling you something, this is beautiful. We've got so many testimonies how these prayer requests are just manifesting themselves and people seeing results because our people have faith again. Our people got light in them again. Our people know that we're the chosen, that the Lord is hearing us. He said he's not a respected person, but he said he is a respected of Israel. That's pretty deep. Now, Rich thinking creamy honey says she's going to change her name. Oh, All praises. praises. Thank you. Because <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I had a young man come on. He said, brother, I ain't trying. I'm trying to get convicted, but what about that girl with rich, dick, and creamy honey? What I say, brother, I said some a little bit. I'll talk to her. But, you know, I said she just was one place she didn't know. Now she's growing. I say that woman is more faithful. She's on our channel more than anybody. She be on my She loves the most day. high. When I say she loved yes. the Lord. Yeah. So, sweetheart, that is part of the refining process. You didn't understand that names bring in country. Uh, it brings in spirits. So and not only that, it brings on uh, people look at you a certain way. It sets off a tone when you say something. So when somebody say rich, thick, creamy, what does it say? Honey. And honey, you know what it brings up in people's thinking. So all praise to the most high. When you do change it, make sure you let us know what it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And don't change it to just honey. And don't think the thick and creamy. <laughs> Let's try to get a spiritual name. All mm-hmm. praises. Mm-hmm. Go on YouTube. Go, on, go online. Look up Hebrew names, female Hebrew names. Do that. And then let the Holy Spirit guide you on one of those names. All praise to the most high. Because we love you. We know you don't mean nothing. You know, we know you love the most high. And this is why we're not judges. You let the Lord judge. But one thing we do when the Lord says, when you see your brother, your sister do wrong, correct them, talk to them. And when you do that, that curse doesn't fall on you. But when they do, if they listen to you and adhere to it, then they'll be blessed for listening. Now, sweetheart, you're going to be blessed for listening. All praises. All right. Thank you guys again. Um, Now, we got to get a lot of prayer requests. So, all you guys who want prayer requests and gals, make sure you inbox me. My phone number for the ministry line is what you need to inbox. I don't know if the, the, they put it in there. Um, so let me put the ministry phone number. My moderators, I don't know if you guys can put this number in for me. 770-276-5840. That's going to be 770-276-5840.
And what I'll do is, okay, all praise to the most high. Thank you guys so much. Blessings. See, I love my like, oh, I love y'all so much. When it's I say I love y'all, y'all don't understand that I love y'all. When I say it's a good feeling that the Lord has brought love back to his people again. Yes. It's a good feeling for me when I sit there and I'll tell my wife all the time. I say, I love my people, don't I? I love Unity. my people. The Lord has put a spirit in me to love our people. Now I understand why Moses prayed for the people and was so passionate. Why, why Ezra prayed for the people so passionate. Why Jeremiah prayed for the people and he was so passionate. When you start teaching this word and you know your people are just blind and don't know nothing, they're ignorant. Ignorant simply means you haven't been learning. It gives you compassion on your people. Then when you hear these questions they ask, man, your heart rejoices because you know they really care. We get, there is no dumb question. When you have been in the dark, how can you ask a dumb question? There isn't one, but you can get a dumb answer. That's why you have to go to a spiritual person. The scriptures say when you see a wise person, you need to wear out their doormat. Mm -hmm. All praise to the most high. All right. So we, I think we got everything good. Um, and like I said, if you guys come to Paso or whatever, treat, please try to help us out. We and if you can't yeah. make it and you have RSV, you got to tell us. Please tell us because um, other we're people want to come to Passover. So. A lot of people are asking, other people are asking to come to Passover, but we're at capacity now. And most camps, they charge two or $3,000 and $200. We're not doing that. We and just want to do this for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. If you have a situation where some people in your party is not going to be coming, let, let us, us know. know that too. So we can open up some seats. Yeah. So be honest with yourself and be honest with us. Now, if you're in a situation where you got so much faith and hope that you're going to make it, but you're not sure, just leave, leave that in the Lord's hand there. And we'll deal with whatever happens on that day. All mm -hmm. praises. But if you have an honest heart and you know you're not going to make it, please let us know. All right. And as we say, we don't go ham. We was always taught that we were cursed people, weren't we? We were from ham. We are blessed people, and we're from who? We're from Shem. All praise to the Most High. All praise. All right. I pray that we see you guys on the Sabbath. This is a good lesson, as always, because the Holy Spirit is here. Thank you, guys. All right. All praise Have a to good the night. Have a good night. All praise to the Most High.